Uh, one of the things to consider, <clears throat> when we speak about going to space, is what do we define the space as? And what do we see, or what we consider as a space? We take a space in our physical body, on this planet, and at the same time, within the structure of our physical body, there is another dimension of life, which we call the soul of the man. And, even though, it lives within the space dimensions of the body of the man, has its own life. And, has its own line of communication. And, what we define space, going to space, we already know the inner sanctum, or the creator of our physicality, travels the depth of the universe, has been the space travel all the time, has a line of communication with other parts of us, be it through dream we call it, or through subconscious some people they call it, or, we have the choice that physically move the physicality with its soul. In a way, we have a bird caged in the physicality of the body of man, and that bird is called the soul of the man. We can open that cage and let it loose at the point of death, when the operation of this cage rots away, it's, and it cannot hold together, and this beautiful bird becomes free. Still, it takes life in the universal dimension, because it has a life. It exists on its own. Or, we can carry the cage in a box and take it anywhere. I can take a bird cage in the car, I can take a bird cage in my hand and walk around the park, it doesn't change the entity and existence of that bird. It's still a bird, it still sings, still communicates with other birds in the park. And this is how our soul is. So, we give option. Those who understand the process of the creation, can take that cage, that bird, out of the cage, and free it. Because we trusted it come back in. It's very much, when you have a parrot at home, you open the door, you let him fly around the house, and he comes back again and he goes in the cage. Because you trust it, he knows that's where he belongs to. And this is the process that we have made an option to man. The soul of the man is that bird. But, is encaged in physicality of body of man, and for the first time, Man knows, man can see, that he, it's him, who hasn't trusted the bird to be freed. And, it has come the time, that he does not need to see the cage to break up, to rust, that the bird can fly out, or by accident, open the cage, the cage's door is open and the bird flies out. That accident is when we die on the street, the bird cage opens up. That bird still gets freed. But now, we, we are teaching how the man has control over this door of the cage. And he trusts that the soul will come back to the body. Or, the bird will stay, that it can create that atmosphere of the home, the cage. This is the problem we have, and this is what we call it, different ways of traveling. But, to be able to free that bird, without accident, or when the cage cracks, rust, and we call it death, we are teaching how to be able to control, to trust, that that bird, when we release it, can come home. Or, can make a home that we can go to. 
when my children were young, um, four or five years old, they wanted a bird, a cockatoo. I bought them a cockatoo. And this bird in the cage was very young, a few weeks old when we got him. And uh, we used to let it free in the house. He knew he goes back in and he sleeps there and he lays egg there. And it came to the point, because of the diseases carried, we had to, the doctors told us, this bird cannot stay in the house because he's causing problem in the house, health problems. So we decided that we loved the key, the bird. We didn't want to let it go, it was part of us. So we decided, if you let it free, it will die, because he, had, he didn't know how to look after himself, because he was hand-fed. We decided, we take him to sanctuary, and we give it to sanctuary to be kept. We carry the cage, in, across a park, and, as we were walking to go to the sanctuary in the park, to be given to them, an old lady saw us, she says, oh what a beautiful bird, we said they have a problem, we love him, but, if you leave him here, we don't know if you see him, she says, I'll look after it, give it to me, you can come and see it, any time you like. And it was just like a gift. So, we gave, we got the old lady in the car, we went to her house, we put the cage there, we showed them how to look after the bird, and the bird was free again in the room, and, every now and then, children said, Papa, can we go and see him? So, we called the lady, we go and see him, and the bird is there. And it was a new home, it was our home. And this is how the soul of the man should be. Is trusting that, where he goes, he can make a home for us. So, in this process, we are teaching different ways of freeing the bird, or carrying the cage, the bird is still there. If you want to carry a cage and go somewhere, you get in the car, that's your spaceship. Still the cage is there, and the bird inside. The cage is the body of the man, and the bird is the soul of the man. Because we haven't trusted, that we get the bird back. We take, carry the cage in the spaceship. Or, there is another line of teaching, which is the understanding, the structure of the cage, that you can make the cage not to rot, that then it frees the bird, but it can open up, and you can carry the bird, the bird is free, you don't need to fuel it, you don't need to do anything, it travels the space of the room, the space of the uh, garden, the space of the city, and it comes back home again. In the way when we teach about the soul of the man, is in getting the man to trust himself. And to trust himself, he has to become detached. He has to come detached from physicality, detached from the wealth, detached from everything else, that the wealth is within me, not belonging to me. And this is where, every man makes a mistake. In many of the teachings, I have referred, if you understand, that you can put the soul of the man, to act with the soul of physicality of the man, you can make anything you like. The soul of the man is the sun, and the soul of physicality in the palm of the hand of the man is the earth. You move it in the direction, you create water, you create food, but you don't need to have it, it creates the energy, that the physicality of the man can absorb. We give the earth in the hand, in the palm of the man, he creates what he needs, he takes what he needs from it. Then, if you understand this, you allow the soul of the man, to carry the soul of the physicality of the man with it, and whenever it comes, it makes that hand, that palm, a thousand meter, one meter, in a cage of physicality, or in a cage of non-dimension. So, it's not methods of flight, 
is the method of man understanding his own potential, his own grace. So, because we have so many people who are so physically attached, we teach about the spaceship for years. This is what it was. They still wanted to see they can get into something. But, as I said, I teach for the universe, not for the man. What we teach in the dimension of soul of the man, many travels of the universe which hear the soul of me, are educated, they understand what they missed. But, as this is the last time we bring a messenger on earth, we teach everything for mankind to carry. All the rules are in the book. There shall be no more messengers. It's for man to translate knowledge. Scientifically, and then through the understanding of the soul of the man. What we call theology, ethics. Ethics of using the science in a way that does not harm no one, but it implies and applies the survival of the others. I was talking about this a few days ago, that there is a paper written by me, the station of the scientist as a prophet. The prophets we call Muhammad, Christ or anybody, are for the soul of the man, conduct of the behavior. Scientists like beautiful Tesla and others are to elevate the same but the physicality of the man. This time we have put the two together in one goal, then there is no difference. We teach the ethics, the soul conduct and physicality. It's for the man to understand where the two merge and when it's needed to be done. The totality, which counts, not the individuality. What you can serve counts, not what serves you. So, in this way, if you are physical, we have given you the spaceship, all these reactors. If you have moved in the dimension of understanding, part of it, you, you have the dynamic system, you get some energies, you put a glass of water, you mix the energy and something else to get there, you're still the camel bird. You put the orange, take the energy, but you still want that the physicality that you're doing something with it, you drink the water. And for the soul of those who understand the totality, then they don't need the cage, the other free bird. And this is the essence of all the teaching. It's not different ways of flight, it's understanding the existence of the universe. Then, if you travel with a spaceship, who do you see? The, the citizens of the universe, in a physical dimension. If you travel with the soul, that you can create the physicality, you take that out of the equation. You travel, but you know you have connection with everybody. It's very much, as I said once, it's like you get off out of uh, London and you go to New York. You're there on your own, you still pick your phone and speak to the family in London. It's not finished. Now, the soul of the man, given the man the same opportunity. We teach for the time to come. And we teach from now, till that time to come. And that time comes, is not anymore the end of the world, something will happen is the maturity of the one's understanding of his own creation.
Welcome everyone to the 279th Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, June 6, 2019. This is a broadcast from the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute and as part of the public teachings in English. My name is Rick Cramond. I'll be your host today along with Flint Malhausen. And we'll be joined and directed with Mr. Kesh of the Kesh Foundation, who is available and willing and able to carry us through this workshop today. Mr. Kesh, are you ready to begin? Yes, good morning, good afternoon to you, as usual, wherever and whenever you listen to these Knowledge Seekers series of teachings. It is interesting to be back, and it's, and it's very interesting to understand we are one step closer to the peace what we came here for. In the past two, three weeks, we have targeted the peace directly, and in a way to call it the end of the wars, the end of the battle for mankind. Whatever is left of the past will be cleaned up, and what we set out will be completed. As you know, I went to some details, in a way, coded message to different administrations, and in response, we seen the administration responding the right way. The week before, we explained, and we saw the response on the following Monday, Iran announcing having a special, two new, what we call, technologies unknown, and then we saw the American response. Last Thursday, we invited President Trump to Iran on the back of the peace talks. And we saw the first opportunity on Saturday, Tehran Iranian government announcing that they are prepared to negotiate, they are prepared to talk. And we saw the same thing from American administration on Monday. We have no conditions set for talk. It's the first time America has says there is no prior condition to talk. So, the moves are getting done, everybody is still, does the both diplomacy in the open and diplomacy in the back. As you remember, when we got involved with the press talks, the peace talks with the administration of Obama, it took us two and a half years to reach the five plus one. This time, it's much easier, because up to now, nobody was aware of each other's in a way, it's like what we call a cockfight. You put the two cocks in front of each other and they're trying to measure it up, but they think they know the other side till they get there. And in so many ways, we encourage both administrations, the Indian government and the American administration. Tehran is the venue for peace. Tehran is the venue for talk. And we will see the same thing goes the nation of Iran calls on the American nation to come together to arrange peace the right way. And the request goes to the officer of the President Trump. They are invited. We wait for your response. You have to understand, sometimes in some corners or some quarters, nations understand when the other side is as powerful as me, I have to talk. We had to show the power again in the past two weeks. And we showed the power very strongly. And the American administration understood peace is the only way. As I said to you, remember, in past few years, the Russians managed to stop what we call the Donald Cook naval ship of the United States. And it was dragged back into Romania and 27 officers resigned. In the past time, very recently, the American naval forces tried to intrude, to provoke an action by Iran. And they sent in a battleship called Mason in the territorial Iranian waters of Hormoz. And they were surrounded by the Iranian passports but none missile armed. Remember last week what I told you. But what happened is that the battleship Mason could not communicate once it got into the territory of Iran without sight. We can give you a lot of details about it, 
but within half an hour, the American military decided to withdraw the battleship out of Strait of Hormuz, and we saw, in a consequence of backwards of it, Mr. Trump announced that wants no war with Iran. As I told you in a quoted way last couple of weeks, that if you could manage to do such a beautiful thing to stop a war using the new technology, it's been the answer we've been praying for. But on the other hand, I said, if we can we stop a battleship communicating with its bosses and the bombers who can by mistake seeing nothing on the radar and bombing the Saudi Arabia instead of Iran, which is a hundred percent possibility, then you know why the peace talk has taken place. This time peace talk is on each other's strength. It's not that we can destroy more. We tested each other. And we are both Iran military shown we are not aggressive. We are a peaceful nation. And we saw the outcome. You have to understand that the head of Mason, the chief captain of the Mason himself, after coming out, he said he did not know what to do, in a way, he was panicking. There is no need to panic, please withdraw your missiles, bring the ship back into Ahwaz, we welcome you, on a peace mission, not on aggression. And this time when you come, you'll find out you have friends in Iran. It has to be said, it's the second time American naval forces have been shown there is more technology sets outside America than America. And it's a good way, because now these technologies can be used for advancements of man into a space and betterment of life for all of us. I thank the Office of Iranian Presidents, I thank the Office of American President in understanding there is time for talk, and, as I said, the Iranian government is preparing themselves to receive President Trump in Tehran. That's an open invitation. But you have to understand, Iran has a problem. Iran has a huge problem, which now the administration of the American government has come to understand. The problem is called John Bolton. John Bolton is a monarchist. He's committed himself to the Iranian monarchy, the old regime. And he's fanning the fire of war to bring them back. We can show you a lot of pictures with him standing around the Iranian old flag with a lion. When we say there is no time and no place for monarchy or kingship, does not apply only to one. It's all over the world. People have to decide if they want the king, but not forced by inheritance. Therefore, now we understand Mr. Bolton was and has been paid to create war, to bring Iranian monarchy back to Iran. Iranian nation has to decide on what it needs, not but outside by Mr. Bolton and his people. You have to understand, they are connected to the other or monarchies in around Europe, and you have to understand a significant in what I just explained. Those of you who are familiar with the work of what you call Masons and the Illuminatis, you have to understand why the American naval forces headed and pushed by Mr. Bolton was using a battleship called Masons. This was to show that the Vatican has taken over and that was a big loss. You have to understand a few couple of weeks ago when the President of America was in Japan, he ordered the ship which carries his opposite part in the coming up election to be hidden in the background and not to be shown in public because that name was so important. Now you understand why the battleship Mason was. It had two reasons. One, declaring the win by the Vatican and Masons and Nazis over Iran, which the ship never got. It was a coded message, then they will start. So, my condolences to Vatican. We invite you, the same, the Pope, to come to Iran with President Trump. Unfortunately, they don't give peace prizes to the men of God, because their job is to create peace and not war. Now you understand a lot. 
I, I speak openly, because this openness needs to be understood by all of us. Now, you will see in so many ways, our knowledge, our technology, in different ways and different parts, has pushed people to understand there is another way, there is alternative way. We have to be strong. <coughs> We have to have the, all the facilities to be able to defend the planet Earth, not from the universal community, but by the eventualities of all the physical damages which will come. Some of it we have created ourselves, some of them is a natural process, some of it is being part of the universe come to us, in the shape of meteorites, in shape of asteroids. We have to understand, as we see meteorites coming into, or asteroids coming into the atmosphere of the Earth, our solar system gets the same thing from the universe. The same thing happens in the same shape. Some of the meteorites we receive on this planet are the remnants of what has entered from the galaxy. And some of it is the remnants we entered from the universe into the galaxy, and then into the solar system, and then into the atmosphere of the planet Earth. So, we see different types of meteorites, we see different type of things. And, some of these meteorites, through the construction of them, can be interfered with plasma fields, that we can open them up. Some of them, we can handle them with a high frequency. Some of them we can use the present satellite systems, that interferes not only with the military, but with the dimension of the noise of the plasma itself, which changes the course. This is how our body absorbs energy from the plasma of the body. The bone of the man vibrates in a way that it calls in what it needs from the gas. It's the same thing. It's not that somebody sitting there, catching a plasma, which is good for, let's say, uh, cancer cell, or is good for uh, immune system. It's the tune, the noise, the music of the universe, is played in the body of the man. I explain in the teaching of the medical teaching, if you get a chicken, or if you see a bone of the man, look at the structure of it, the curvature on the top, which is like a stranded, these are what he plays the music to call in <clears throat> the, what we call the lymph into the body of the man. So, the planet Earth plays the same tune, and it calls in, the universe does the same thing, solar system do the same thing. So, in a way, the new technology which we have developed will come very handy for the man, as you can travel with the speeds beyond the speed of light beyond the speed of sound, beyond many speeds we know. As you understand, there is a new technology which has been released, as we know, that you can go what they call super fast and everything else. This technology comes on the back of the Keshe Foundation development in nanotechnology. You have to understand, the speed is how relevant you can change the friction in the atmospheric condition. What does this mean? It means, for those of you who will start traveling this part of universe, you will see, you have to do, it's not just that we can make shielding with everything else. What you will see in what is known as the super speed, Russians have said they bought it, as we know, the Chinese are at it, the Americans would love to get their hands on it, but the simplicity of it is that all of you understand how the plasma and nanotechnology have mixed into the new space era. When you have a plane, most of the energy of a craft is used to overcome the friction of the resistance from direction of the motion. If this is your aeroplane, which I'm not very good at, that's what it does. The new space technology, the new rocket technology, the neat dimension is, we know, as I said with Concorde, we used to get the nose changed, and we used to go faster. Now, the space technology has moved to another dimension. Americans, with the shuttle system, they made what we call popcorn, 
and they put it there on the resistance of the entry, that they could survive. But if you understand the totality of the knowledge in the plasma technology and what most of you have made in your kitchens, in your bathrooms, in your garages, in your laboratories, is that you made the ganses. How did you make the ganses? You nanocoated it. The nanocoat material, if it's used like in the brake of a car, will need more energy because it's got a space gap. If you use in a specific way ahead of rockets or new material, the slides of wind, the friction literally reaches zero. But the beauty of it is that the nanotechnology material on the warheads or on the missiles, we target on a, uh, let's say, uh, meteorite, does not heat up. So, the body stays cool. So, it has two effects. One is frictionlessness. The other one, at temperatures which might reach, there is no heat transfer. You get a nanomaterial in your hand and put it in a fire and pick it up, you can hold it. Now, you understand why the new super speed lights are getting place. But, at the same time, within the structure of these super speed flights, they create a plasmatic dimension, which gives it the second addition of real color. Americans are searching for this. Come to Iran, we show you how. But, we use it for peace, we use it for space technology. This is when, if you read the articles, Russians and the Chinese and Americans and unfortunately, as I said, the Russians stopped the American ship May of a few years ago and Iranian in May of this year done the same thing with Americans, again in the high seas. Now, we open another dimension to our friends. We can reach Washington in milliseconds. So, we talk peace, we understand the new technology, and we understand, we appreciate the next level of the science which is coming through. And it's the job of all of us to do this. We are busy with a lot of things, but at the same time, being busy developing a situation like what we have done and what we achieved with China, has not distracted us from other things like the factories and everything else. We need the time to consolidate and put things right. And many of you who done some work around the Keshe Foundation, or you're busy with us, that's what we are busy developing. Very advanced systems. And it takes time, energy and a lot of things. We are all investing in peace, investing in the future of our children. And this is what is about to come. We got to understand the technology, when it's open, we all benefit by it. The technology, when it's discussed openly, nobody can abuse the others. In very interesting way, we all becoming the passengers of the universe for a short time. But that short time has to be peaceful to all of us. In the discussion of last week, um, Caroline brought the subjects about the global warming and what we're going to do. There is a very fundamental point that cannot be uh, ignored. We have to understand. As I explained before in the teaching, one of the reasons we are getting warmer is that we are getting pulled towards the sun. That's part of the gravitational pull. The other thing is, the creation of the CO2 has been the backbone of creation of life on this planet. What we see, especially like with coral reef and other places, there is a new addition to the equation, which is the production of the CO2, 
the oceans of this planet can take many, many times more than what CO2 we are putting in the atmosphere, if there is no heating. So what happened, in so many ways, the carbon CO2 changes into acid. And temperatures at a certain point is a point of conversion. And when that heating point of conversion comes in, that's where, in fact, the chain of amino acid breaks up. You do not need to be a genius to understand this. And this is what is sitting with Keshe Foundation technology in coming time. You see, you say we have CO2 and then the temperatures have gone up, we are losing all the, what do you call it, um, planet underwater life or over the water life. Yes, but understand the reason behind it, understand the science behind it. All of you, you know, when you have a high temperature, you pass 42, 43, they try to cool you down, because ganses in the condition of the amino acid of the man, at a given temperature, break up to a new structure. In a way, the carbon and the nitrogen take a nose dive because the temperature the temperature dependent on hydrogen which is releasing its energies becomes in a different strength so if you understood if you talk to the man of medicine they tell you after 43 44 degrees the brain cells just die they don't just disappear they don't they don't get destroyed it's just the amino acid has a temperature inertia relationship in the body of the man and on this planet so what we see is the same thing happening to this planet with a slight temperature and the presence of the acidity of the water and we are losing all the coral reefs we are losing the plants but there is a message of peace in all this, and this is the reason what I speak, and you might understand, and this is a part of the technology which the Keshe Foundation in the coming months will develop and will release. We don't need to develop it, we'll, we'll submit it in other ways. Understanding this position that all the lives on this planet depends on Mr. Cohen, we have to understand the effect of what we call a temperature, or due to the inertia of matter state of the planet. If knowledge seekers understand this, and understand the energy transfer, then we understand how global warming, what the mankind calls today, can be reversed in no time. Chinese Keshe Foundations understood this, but in a different way, two or three years ago. At the same time, if you understand the connection between the heat and the CO2, that it creates to the end of the life of planets and everything else, then we understand mankind has seen the first time a new dimension in handling this environment. If mankind understands this, you have found the solution to everlasting life. You have found the solution to everlasting food, or what we call energy supply for the body of the man. Even for the soul of the man. If you understood the connection between the soul of the man and the physicality of the man, and you learn how to feed the soul of the man, then you have become a true man of the universe. Because in the process of coming in interaction with other in the universe, 
for a human being, you look at the dimension, the strength of their soul, and the strength that that soul can manifest itself in physicality. The principle of knowledge, intellect, environment, physicality, is the same across the universe. Man is not unique, and the uniqueness of the man has no limit. We are not limited to what we understand. In a very short time, we all understand plasma and plasma technology. I, it's amazing how this knowledge is spreading around the world. And how governments are using it, utilizing it, understanding it, and applying it to their own benefit, and to the nation's benefit, and scientific benefit. In many of the teachings, I refer to the field interaction. I refer to interaction of the life. I refer into how we can change the position of the man in zero time space. There are principal operational understanding and every man can make the light, every man can make the soul, every man can make anything that he desires to have. We have to understand now, the connection between the soul of the man, the energy of the soul of the man, and Mr. God. This is a piece of knowledge which is missing. And mankind need to understand, to be able to do another part of the living in the universe. What does this mean? This means a very simple thing. If you look at it, you have Mr. Cohen. You look at it as a gas. Protein on top of the water of CO2. You give it to a doctor, he will tell you, this is the structure of the light. We call it a protein. Life depends on this. That's how we get. But, we said in the teaching of last week that the soul of the man becomes the common denominator between many Kohans, who we call the body of the man. And this brings it under control. So, this, if you remember the teaching of the past, very, very first time, if you go on the first videos, Ever we released about the explanation of protons and electrons, it was done. You understand in many of the teachings I refer, mankind, for the first time, can make magnet of anything. If you have a wood and you have an iron, you cannot make the magnet of wood out of the iron. But if you convert the matter of iron to its plasma state, then you can choose whatever you need. But, on the other hand, if you have a plasma of the wood, and the wood itself, you can interact with it, because then now you have found the magnet of it. So, if you understood this, it comes to one fundamental principle. The soul of the man has the characteristics of Mr. Kohan in a magnetic field gravitational structure. Then, if you understood this, and you understood that you eat the grass, you eat the fruit, you eat the lamb, and you get it in protein, to add by energy, but not as an element, then you should be able to communicate both ways through the soul of the man, understand the energy of the soul of the man, and its physicality. 
the way which I explained just a few minutes ago, that we can dissolve a meteorite by releasing an amount of energy to it, that it can never come. We can create a condition of the plasma to manifest the meteorite in the matter state too. This is how we make the matter. At the same time, if you understood this, so shall this be the soul of the man, and this be the physicality of the man. Then those of you who are testing for flight, those of you who see light, those of you who are speaking about all sorts, look into this and see what you have missed. Do not look into the matter state, or the effect what you see in matter state. Look in what you can do with the field interaction. There's an old say by Kennedy, huh? Don't ask what America can do for you, ask what you can do for America. You ask what you want from the physicality, and ask what can I give from physicality, to spread my soul beyond the dimension of physicality. Because man is only interested and works with the physical dimension. For him, the soul is a dream which was out. Now this guy has come and put it in. When he was out, they could abuse me in the name of God, which they never understood. Inside me, I am the protector. I am in touch with God. I am the creator of the physicality of myself, and I can control the dimension of it, if I understand how that soul of man works. It is important for all of us, to understand one thing very clearly. We have to go back into teachings, and in many teachings, I said the condition, and we go back to the writing of the Prophet of the past. They say the maturity of the man comes when he can mutate, understand the mutation of elements. With a new technology, we understand the mutation of energies, not elements. We went from copper to gas, and we became gold. Now, we go from the soul of the man, into the direction of the energy of it, to create the physicality of the man. But, what we said in all the teaching, man has matured to the point of completion, where now he can go through the same process, and create the energy out of matter, and matter out of energy. So, the soul of the man can make the physicality of the man, and that, physicality of the man and energy, can make the soul of the man. There is no difference in the dimension of the creation. Just different names, for the same process. Now, it's not just mutation of elements, it's the mutation of energy, that it can lead to another energy, that if it likes, it interacts, and it shows itself in the totality of the presence of the physicality, in the eye of the beholder. If you understand this, you can create brain cells, if you understand this, you can create copper, gold or silver in the space, if it has anything. And, in so many ways, in a space, there is no currency. Banks only exist on this planet, and printing machines are part of the man's intelligence to print money, to control. As we've seen, mankind has taken one step backwards, and two steps forward, and over centuries we have got more and more and more mature. In understanding the totality of the business. But, how far the science of man goes? What are we prepared to accept as part of the knowledge? As I said before, we start 
polishing the technology because all the, the knowledge of the universe has been taught. Now you have to understand how to play, how to manipulate, how to structure, to achieve, to be able to deliver, to be able to attain. If you understood this, what is on the screen, then you understand how life will be wonderful and easy in the span of the universe. If you are looking into the strengths of the soul of the man, it means you do not understand the teaching of today. And you have not managed to put all the teachings together. We structure energy. And in that structuring, we decide the condition of energy or matter of that energy. And something which a lot of people in the future would understand is that energies can manifest themselves in any condition of the matter. This is one of the interesting things if you understand. And the same goes with us. So what this means, if you understand in depth, very simple. On planet Earth, the life of the man, the energy of the soul of the man, is created through the strength of the God. If you take the soul of the man, which has the strength of Kohan, to another dimension, which let's say is Kohan, which is with potassium and the carbon, then you will be dissolved. You cannot exist, unless you understand this principle. So, life becomes everlasting in any dimension of the universe. Many races in space have lost and come back to different, what we call the strength, because they did not understand this process. So, when you enter a dimension of the strength of the universe, which is higher than you, you have to understand how to change the strength of the Kohan as a plasmatic field of existence to sense of Mr. Kohan which is in the potassium level. So, man can mutate in the energy level, in any point of the creation, as long as he understands, when he wants to convert into the Gans of the state, he has to watch the matter of the state too. Because one of the most fundamental problems with mankind is a new problem. We said, in the process of their life, between the interaction between the Sun and the Earth, in the field interactions, we saw the creation of the amino acid. Now, what and how we never understood is that there is a plasma in the center of this planet. And this is very strange, because now man went all the time to his present understanding from energy and conversion to the matter of whatever it became. But now we understand in new phenomena. Energy to Gans, and if you want to energy or matter. This is the new game, new state of the matter. Mankind can change itself into a new condition in between the two. And a new form of existence appears. The body of the man is made in this, but at the same time, in a Gans' state of itself, the body of the man carries the matter state too, we call it the bone of the man. 
because it's in a matter state, partially, where the muscle of the man is in a Gans state. So, if you understood this, then we understand what we assumed that we go from energy to mass, in between there is a Gans. Where in the Gans state, we have manifestation between the energy and dimension of the physicality. And this is the reason why you see your ganses in your containers. So, for the first time, man understands he missed in between. And there are many, many in betweens. Mankind knowledge is not to grasp that at this moment. So, now we understand what you always all been familiar to, with a little bit of explanation, you understand what you are dealing with. A state of matter between the energy and the matter state. In a way, if you look at it, Gans is a camel bird, what they call ostrich. If you ask him, if your energy Show us the star, he cannot do. And he say, if you are a matter, and he show you something, why don't you become solid? And this new state of energy is new to man. And if those of you who understand this, understand that this carries the totality of energy of the Kohen in every dimension in the universe, according to the point of manifestation, then you understand that life is for everlasting. Then it comes, do I create a soul to be perfect, that going through the transition of existence of the Gans, still will be perfect, and when it manifests itself in the dimension of matter, still is perfect. In the chemistry, mankind came to add, let's say zinc and copper and whatever, he made alloys. In the dimension of the energy, mankind came to mix different elements of the Gans, and it ended up with life. There is no difference. In a matter state, you get alloys. In the energy state, mixing, you get life, you get intelligence, you get what we call the creation of the soul of the man, the universe, and the rest of it. And if you introduce the right amount of material and the inertia strength, you remember we said inertia is when the matter state comes to energy of the matter level, then it manifests itself as a matter. In the body of the man, this state comes with the bone structure of the matter. So, inside the memory, inside the brain of the man, inside the soul of the man, there is a code for matter state too. Because if you go on planet, whatever, and there is no gravitational magnetic field of the calcium, you become part of jelly on the ground. But if you want to have a physical structure, what kind of matter state you bring in to play through the direction of the soul of the man, that it can hold the structure, if you want to be like a man. Now, the science of existence becomes very sweet. Now, we need collection of scientists to get together. We need to bring the elite science of the world together, and we'll do it as what we call the Keshe Foundation way, that we decide, we invite world scientists to join us, to complete this cycle for man, to be able to be taught to enter a space. And this process needs maturity of understanding, and peace on this planet. Because, in a way, 
you don't need to kill. What we did with Mason, we can do with the bone of the man. Man will do the same in the space to himself, if he doesn't understand the conversion of the ganses to new strength that he can survive in any direction and any dimension. Then, if you understand the totality of the conversion of the ganses as an energy, then you understand the speed of light is not existence. If the scientists understand the totality of interaction of the fields, what mankind is looking for as zero time communication, zero time energy, zero energy point of reference, all become irrelevant, which means the zero time, as I said many times, is the point you start. Because the energy and the plasma and the fields are already there. To you is the non-existence, and to you is how to tap into it. Listen to the teaching of today, many, many times. And your soul will get enlightened. And if you live in the dimension of physicality, hang on and live for billion years. We have to extend the knowledge to understand the totality. We put ganses in the cores and we do different things with it and nothing happens. We get ganses, but in that gans in the core, we interact with the energy of the gravitational magnetic field of the soul of the man and the ball lights up. The same, the matter will manifest itself or the energy. So, the soul of the man does not have time and space and position. The soul of the man has a point of manifestation according to the point of the observer. Man sees me with two legs and two arms. The passengers of the universe do not see the physicality of the man, they see the soul of the man, as a light, and the extension of the light. And it's for the man to decide how bright this light shines, how it clears itself of all the, what we call absorption of the fields, what we call the blanket on the soul of the man, which is the brain of the man, and the rest. If you have, and have the capability to work and operate at the strength of bad amino acid gravitational magnetic field, when you look at the man, you only see the soul of the man and the stars, which are the souls of every cell of the man. So, the soul of the man becomes the God of that body, the creator of that body. The creator of all these souls, which is a collective interaction of them, makes the physicality of the man, and the dimension which the man wants to manifest himself, to confirm his existence. As I always say, do I need to teach more? Or is mankind deaf? into understanding the totality of the work of the universe. You have to understand, and the creation of life, the examples of the life, is in front of the man. But we never understood the totality of it, because we always looked at the physicality of it. Now, we have, as I said, we call it the CO2, in interaction with the water, makes uh, acid, 
an interaction with the acid has done it for years, billions of years. It has led to creation of all life. Now, with us reaching and partially changing the magnetic gravitational field of the planet, now we heat up. Now, the matter-state interaction has interacted with the plasma insertion of the, what we call the Gans of the matter. And this disintegrates the whole energy back to taking the soul of the plant, not the physicality of the plant. This is important. When you look at barrier reef, the plants are there. Physicality confirmation of existence there is the soul of the plant which has left the plant due to the fields which what we call the amino acid of the plant or the structure of the acidity with the temperature have created a new strength which is matching the strength of the soul of the plant and the plant. And that's why we see so much barrier reefs are disappearing. Now we have to understand the truth, not being on two boats and not knowing what's happening. Saving the, all the problems in the, what you call the oceans, and in the, whatever, the plant world, it's easy, if you understand. Why? The plant leaves the tree, its physicality, we burn it as a wood. And we just call it, that is a dry wood. Is there any difference between the tree which is dried and is dead in that physicality, and the physicality of the man when the soul leaves the body of the man? It's just a lump of cancer, with different strength, that is liquidified. So, there is no difference. So, if within the structure of the amino acid of what we call CO2, and a slight interaction with the field of the heat, the soul of the plant can leave it, and to become in another dimension, so how easy shall be for me to take the soul of the President to one spot? But, would that solve the problem? Or, what we have said, in a very simple way, let collectively man, to come to understand, that there is no need for creation of the conditions, to separate the soul of the man, from his physicality, when the time of the separation, in acceptance of the two, what we call the natural death of separation, is not decided by the soul. In a stopping war, the man not to kill themselves, man does not live for the rest of the universe time. It's just that he decides on the point of the reference of the conversion from energy to a gas, and from gas back to the energy of the creation of another dimension. That's all it is. We are, in reality, nothing but that chicken in the chicken farm. We are nothing but that pig in the pig farm. When we have pig swarm, flu, which has come, and millions of the pigs die, we say there is a disaster. What is the disaster? Just because we haven't chosen the time of the slaughter of the animal, but the process at the end is the same. It's disaster for the man who cannot consume the physicality. How can we breed animals to the point that when we want to consume their amino acid, is the correct conduct? But when the nature does, there is something wrong in that process. And why does the process come into operation? Why? What have we done to the animals 
that they collectively wish their own end. When you go into a farm, you see pests on the tree. We done the Keshe Foundation test many times. We change the environment, the pests disappear. We don't do anything. It's the environment of the damage to the soul of the animal that creates all these new diseases for animals and man. Because we are not content in the body of the physicality of the man. We have become that acid with the temperature. Is the suffering with the interaction of the soul, with the interaction of the soul of the physicality, which raises the temperature that releases the dimension in a way by calling the soul of the animal at the strength of life to become to be releasing the pig from suffering in the what we call pig farm that the man does not choose the time of the end the animal chooses that point itself and this is the god given right to every living things in the universe At the moment, with the physicality of the body of the man, we call it, we call it suicide. But, in the dimension of the energy and the gans of the body of the man, <coughs> we can allow that the energy to be converted to what the environment likes to have. Then still, you can live in the dimension of the physicality and the totality of the process of the existence in balance in the universe. Many of you, who have started working on creating the systems which create what we call cancers and souls, if you understand these, you should become passengers of the universe in no time. But understand the interaction of the change, and if you put a matter state in between the change, then you have limited your position. Many of you cannot create flight because of these, because you never understood what's been explained on the board. Then you can choose, you want to fly within the matter state, or you want to fly within the state of the energy of the matter. The science of creation, It's so easy. Enjoying it, is so wonderful. It's just a man who has decided to eat himself and enjoy himself the wrong way with this technology. Which is the technology of the creation of the man, or life in the universe. The conversion can it be at the level of strength of the soul? The conversion can be at the strength of the level of the physicality of the man. Or can be both that you have a solid bone and a muscle tissue. Let me explain to you something, maybe you understand. We drink. And we eat. Have you ever stood still to think? in the conversion of energy to matter, within the body of the man. We drink water, it goes through our system. But, at the kidney level, <coughs> with respect to magnetic gravitational field of the Earth, in the given position, it converts back into matter state, and we urinate but in the body of the man, is not there. You cannot separate water, or another cell of water, because it's all energy packs. If you understood this, 
you understand how to feed the physicality through the soul of the world. I hope many of you have understood this, because this needed explanation, this needed to be, for those of you who are heading towards understanding the strength of the soul, those of you who are heading towards wanting to create a flight system, those of you who are trying to achieve lift and motion to the school of the thought of the man, you've all been given, every one of you, the tools according to your understanding and your intelligence. None of you is wrong, and none of you is right to be wrong. It's just that you have to start knowing what you want, and how you mix that energy to reach that point. It's very much like if you were in the school, in the first years, the teachers brought different paints, different colors, and they mixed it for you. Red and green gives this color, blue and red gives this color. And this is exactly about the soul of the man, the condition of the existence of the man. And then you understand how even mankind has come to have different color races so proud of his own stupidity, because he never understood. In the coming time, <laughs> if you are, for example, black and you want to be white, plasma technology will do it for you in no time. And if you are white, and you are in Africa, you want to look as beautiful as Africans, why not? We just change the feeling of Hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Sorry, for interruption. <coughs> so, your white man comes to have. Now we can do the same. In the course of the interaction of the soul of the man with the universe, these things become very common. It becomes part of the process of understanding, it part of the structure of understanding of the work of the man. It's not that we do not know anymore, now we know all of it. We know A to Z of it, it just depends on us, do we like to play with the A or the Z? But, is A the creator, or Z? It depends on what we want to produce. It depends on what we expect of creation. It depends on, do we want to be part of this creation? 
but do we want to elevate our souls to become the level of the soul of the Creator? It's very much exactly like what we see in the clockwork. You start from one and you go to twelve, but at the same time, the twelve becomes one. The twelve at noon becomes the twelve at lunch, and back again on the same time. The switch is on the state of the mind of the man, not on the arm of the clock. No one has said, mankind has to work during the day. Mankind has chosen the path to be working during the day, because in the past, when the dinosaurs were alive, mankind as a what we call being, chose to be in the roots and in the under the ground, because it was safe for him to be there. We changed the habit, because we understood what it benefit us and what we can gain from it. So, this process has to be understood very, very fast by those of us who become the passengers of the universe in a very short time. Many of you want to know a lot more. What is the outcome? Where are we going to end? Nowhere. You decide where your soul ends, not mine. I decide, I want to be in the party you are. And you decide, if you want to be in the party I am. Most probably no. Most probably, you want to become passenger of the universe by soul. How do we recognize the strength of our soul? This goes back to, in a very simple way, how did we come to understand the strength of our intelligence? Because, in that point, mankind becomes and understands the strength of the soul of the this is what, as a whole, we need to understand. We need to be part of, that we can elevate to higher levels, in understanding of the creation. No more. We don't become any better than the others. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Keshe. And as usual, uh, I'll remind the attendees they can put their virtual hand up in order to ask a question. Um, I'd like to uh, put Hello. forward... Can you hear me, Mr. Keshe? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Keshe, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Somehow, I could not hear you. Can you hear me speaking? I can hear you now, yes. It seems a little bit distant, but... Yeah, it's okay. We have some problem with... What did you hear up to where? Did you hear me asking if you have any questions? Yes, and I was about to... Pre um, I would like to present uh, Bente's question, which you've answered already in many ways, but I'd like to refer directly to it, which is, she says uh, she's restudying from the 260th Knowledge Seekers Workshop onwards, and uh, where Mr. Kesh talks about black holes. And he says the soul is one, the earth has one, the galaxy has one, etc. And Mr. Keshe talks of traveling in space. My two questions are, one, how can we determine the field strength of a planet or galaxy we want to go to? Two, how can we match that exact field strength in our soul or spaceship if we use such a thing? 
such that um, we can travel to that place. So you've decided to become the passenger of universe. And you're trying to find the key. Am I correct? Well, it, it seems like that, yes. Um, I wish Bente was here to ask to uh, say that. I, I could find out if she's on the Facebook and has a comment about that. Um, well, she asks, how can we match that exact field strength in our soul? So is, is that perhaps the, the technique in itself, the answer to the question in a way? If we, the first question, how can we determine the field strength of a planet or galaxy we want to go to? And then if we were to match that planet or galaxy with the exact field strength in our soul, would we not be there? <laughs> would be the question that I would put in. Um, the soul of the man, or the operation of the physicality of the man, has not understood the work of the planet and have not understood the work of the field interaction of the planet and has not understood the totality of the interaction of the field of the matter state. I've explained this before and I was explaining it this week to one of the knowledge seekers. And that is, you can have one, let's say, field force of 100, and plus 10, you get 110, or you can have 110 of ones. And in the work of the life of the man, we have always looked for that we can create as much as big ones to get fast to want. But if you look on the work of the universe, like Earth, the position and magnetic field of the Earth is created from many ones, not from huge ones. This is important if you want to travel to a position in the universe. Many ways this misunderstanding has come by the teaching of Newton. Newton has expressed the position of the matter state not the position of the plasmatic field state. This is what the scientists who work with the Keshe Foundation technology become very fast wise to. This is something which many of you have to comprehend before you can take into point before you can go the next step in understanding of the totality. We, we have to understand the totality of the knowledge. And in that process, because of the Newton laws that they say the more force you exert, the faster you go, this does not apply in the law of the plasma of the universe. And if you look at it, the weaker plasmas lead to creation of the motion and creation of the existence of the matter states in the control of the totality. We don't have a massive field force which dictates our position in the universe is those little, little magnetic fields of the totality of the, all the stars has dictated the position of this planet. 
even the star you see in the furthest distance has dictated our position. And that's why we see its light. Because that connection already exists because he has decided very how far from it we can be without endangering or changing his position. So our scientists have to understand this. Then we can go to the next step. We are looking to create massive magnetic fields to create lift and motion in the space. We have to look into the weakest but the totality of the point of destination. The closer you get, the stronger the field becomes. And then it's a very easy, if you see a star, it's where you are, where you want to go. If you see a planet, you can recognize it. It already has sent you the address. GPS is on the light of it. But mankind has never understood this. We do not want to understand this principle. Until we don't do, we will have a problem. We see the star. The star has already sent its GPS. Uh, we lost your connection temporarily. No, we didn't lose connection. Okay. It's just that We're I good. was changing, trying to have a problem with my internet connection. So, Very good now, thank you. Yeah, okay. So, what we see, what we understand, and what we have to understand is... Hello, Mr. Kesh. I think we lost him at what we need to understand is dot, dot, dot. Hello, Mr. Kesh, we can't hear you right now. Still waiting for the sound to come back, Mr. Kesh. Hello? Hello, Mr. Kesh. I'll send him a message, he may not be able to, to hear me. Still waiting for the audio to come back. Hello, Mr. Kish. Hello, Mr. Kesh, still waiting for your audio to come back. Hello? Still not hearing your audio. Seems to be trying to come through in the background, but I don't hear any audio yet, Mr. Kesh. 
if you can hear me. Hello, Mr. Kish. Okay, well, bear with us as we uh, wait for the connection from Mr. Kesh to clear up here. Might be an internet, uh, temporary internet glitch. Hello, can you hear me now? Ah, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, we have a bit of a slight problem with the internet. Okay, just give me one second till I connect it the right way. Can you hear me now clearly? Uh, yes, very good, thank you. Okay, now we're, I've been writing on the screen for you that I can hear you, I could hear you, but you can't hear me. Uh, okay, what, what we have to understand is that the stars, what we see, they sent us their bandwidth, their strength. We are used to seeing their light, but in fact, what we see is, in so many ways, the totality of. Uh, what we don't want to, or what we uh, cannot see, is still, there is a bandwidth of it. And when we become educated that we need to have both gravitational and magnetic fields of a planet position, then we'll find out that we can do everything. We can reach any soul we can reach any uh, point in the universe, and by having that, we already know the position. We are looking for noise to reach us, but that noise has a return, is magnetical and gravitation. When the mankind starts decoding both fields, you find a source. You, you will find the totality, and this is part of these teachings, which we are going through. That, in a way, up to now, we just looked at the distance of the planet from us, but we never considered that distance is created by two dimensions, not only by the dimension of the physicality of the light, but what that light is taking from us. It's uh, understanding what comes to us is returning back, is taking something from us that we dictate its position, and it dictates our position. If, in the coming time, when the, uh, we have more money to spend on development of the space, and our governments start spending less on arms, all these things will be sorted. Because then we start really understanding the totality, the measure, the space gap, the gap between the um, magnetic fields of the planet, magnetic field of the universe, 
we will understand the separation between the field strength of the soul and the field strength of the planet or the galaxy because we we are not educated yet enough to understand the mixtures of the galaxies mixtures of the fields can you hear me uh yes we hear you yeah. fine but but your screen sharing hasn't come through yet no i'm trying to screen share with another line but apparently we have a lot of problems it doesn't matter so I have a screen share in front of me, whiteboard is there, but you don't see it because I wrote to you hello before you didn't see it. I said, I'm here, you didn't see it. And it's just go, it's just black right now. Now we see a whiteboard. And that's right, yeah. Okay, now I understand. So, in this process, what you have to gather, what we have to gather as knowledge seekers, as the scientists of the space, is what we always taught in all our teachings. If you have two entities, this be your soul, this be your physicality, this be another star hiding behind many, 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 many stars. Does not matter you see it or not, but you know you hear a measure. You can't see it, it's in the background. If you can measure it, don't forget, by understanding it, it has a return. The difference between these two and man detecting the return, he can fly back on this magnetic field. Because the field forces of this planet does not matter what else, has dictated the position of this planet. And as I said, the same as us. The state of the planet, we always look at the light of the star which comes to us. We never think that that star sees our light too. That that star, as much as we see its light, it sees our light. So, what we receive has a feedback of the gravitational and magnetic. We have to understand which one belongs to this, which planet. Then you can travel on the magnetic field of that star to the star in zero time. Up to now, we only look, we see the star, there's a star in the sky, and it's this and that. But, you forget one part. If I can see it, it can see me too. The field forces of the Earth has conditioned it as much as that conditions me. This is the next step in understanding the totality of the zero time travel. Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Yes, clearly. So, now, we, we understand another step. This is what the science has to establish. It's the same. This is the soul of the mother and is in touch with the child. It's the child which has to understand the feedback line to the soul of the mother. Because the mother is already established alive. Doesn't matter if she's in a physical dimension or not. And that's how we, in a physical dimension, in a physical dimension, we lose the physicality, but in the strength of the soul, we're still in touch with the mother. And in time, when the soul of the mother, in the interaction in the cycle of life, if it comes to another dimension, which it loses 
the path this loses its strength and it becomes part of or dissolves into the other is the time that we lose the totality of connection with that soul you have to understand the soul of the man does not last all the time has the same condition of everything else It gives and it takes energy, but by the order and the way it works, it lasts longer, slightly, maybe by a few thousand years, by a few years, a few million years, longer to be collectively together. We are nothing but conversion of energies of the universe. And nothing, nothing lasts, except the soul of the Creator, which is the Creator of the whole. So, as mankind has managed to measure the light and the distance, now mankind has to understand the magnetic field strength of both coming and going. And which one belongs to who? And there are so many of them, you have as I said, in teaching many times, there are as many we are keeping apart from us, as they are coming to us. We dictate the position of the star we never seen in another universe, because our field affects it, even though we are tiny. So, the creation of the soul of the man, the creation of the magnetic field, the soul of the planet, is of the very weak, not of the strong. I was explaining this to knowledge seekers very little past couple of days. And how these two will twist and interact will decide what matter you manifest. I hope we made it clear. It's very strange when you start teaching or explaining something, others of the same school of thoughts and the part of the world come up with the same answers or same questions, same school of understanding. Mankind does not look too far to make the most complicated space reactors to travel the span of the universe. Mankind only thing is to understand the weakest strength which has come in and which one goes back. It's very much like if your mother calls you, you know this is the voice of the mother and you answer to the mother. And if your brother talks, you say, I've got nothing to do with talking to somebody else, not me. But even I can hear him and I'm aware of it. Because now we have to find the gravitational magnetic field of the feedback or the return, what we call the gravitational to the planet, magnetic or to us. The ear of the mother is gravitational, is receiving. The voice of man is magnetical, is what she's sending. When you shout, mother, does anybody else answer you? Yes. No, only the mother does, because you have created that point. It's the same. You want to even get in touch, be in touch, understanding of the soul of the man, you have to understand, you don't need huge, you just have to find the path. The energy for transfer is already there. This is why, very, very small reactors can carry millions of tons, because you don't do anything, you just get on the wind. Because you create a slightly bigger, heavier, gravitational in that strength. And magnetical in return, in respect to the planet. So what does it do? It, it brings you to find balance point. 
in the space technology of the future, we never fly this way. We fly, we fly, we fly, we fly. Because these diversions gives you higher speed or conversion into the speed, not going through different directions, dimensions. Or you can choose a direct path of flight. Because going this way is too dangerous. The new the space technology, if you understand, is very simple. <sighs> I'm sorry, Russian friends, I'm going to open something for you in the hand of understanding. You can fly to keep within a bandwidth of electron. Two ways. You can keep on changing your magnetical to gravitational in respect, or you are on Earth, you pick the Moon. You fly past Moon, you change the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth. By throwing yourself back and forth, you keep a constant flow at high speed. There are many ways to, to fly in space. You have to decide, you are flying in a matter state, you are flying in a gaseous state, you are flying in a magnetic field state, are you flying in the composition of magnetic and matter state? If you have a problem, look inside your body, you see the whole lot of work of the universe is inside the body of the man. But understand it from the plasmatic field transfer, not from man understanding of matter state. This is the problem most of us have. We mix things up and then it causes problem for us in the long run. Are there any other questions? Well, I just like to comment, and I see that Doug's put a comment that's similar. That at one point there, you in your diagram, you reminded me of when I was a child, and I had a flashlight, and I'd be looking up at the sky at night, and flicking the flashlight on and off with the thought that I was communicating somehow with those who are in space and uh, now I'm thinking um, perhaps maybe you did maybe I really did <laughs> yes <laughs> because if you are connecting then you've already connected and whether that light ray from the actual flashlight actually gets there or not is irrelevant because the connection was essentially already made so but Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, but I thought if you think of it, what I said, how many aliens did you attract into your torch? Well, this is it, and it shows up later in my life, and you know, now this is what we're talking about, and it's very interesting to see the progression. As Doug says, as, as a children, we used to lie down on the back lawn and look into deep space at the visible stars and wonder. We ask the question, uh, are there some kids looking back and asking the same question? <laughs> most probably, yes. But most probably they read the divine, or what we call, they heard the message of the soul than the physicality of the body of the man. Yes, and they may have had several heads and many arms or whatever, but uh, yeah, they would but be still a that. child. Mm -hmm. How many times have you stood in front of us? Says, I'm here, I'm here, can you see me? <laughs> it's just we had it now. I'm trying to write to you and everything. I can hear your voice, but you cannot see me or hear me. It's a one-way traffic. <sighs> Today we have a presentation from Jim, from Australia, in regarding the agriculture. The paper is getting published in the journal of this month. And it's a fantastic, it's part of the work we've seen from Jim before. 
and uh, part of the work we have to develop and to do uh, to understand more about agriculture and everything else. Um, before we do this, I said this before, now we're coming to the point of it, we have to put a structure to it, is that um, the foundation in conjunction with the Chinese partners, which are the financiers, we are setting up what we call research center, center of excellence for scientists from China and around the world. We are looking we will invite, some of this microphone is open, we will invite a number of eminent scientists to come to this point of working with us. We are looking not huge numbers, we have to, you know, we hopefully have to sort out the things, the budget of it out now. But we are looking to bring Cash Foundation Plasma scientists into this world. And it's something we try to sort out in the next few days, is part of our joint collaboration with our Chinese partners. And that is, we are looking for scientists, Cash Foundation scientists, to work hand in hand next to the world scientists, Chinese and non-Chinese. And then, most probably, after working close here in China, you go back and we carry on with the same work through other Keshe Foundation developments. And we take the step further. We, this is in construction, we're getting it, more or less, putting it through. A number of, and I say, just because you made Gansis does not make you a Cash Foundation scientist. We have many people who make Gansis. If you have developed, you understand we try to bring the world scientists together, the, not the elite scientists, those scientists who have understood and can work within the structure of the new plasma technology, we would like to bring you into China. The budget is allocated, but we're going to get allocated, and what we need, we structure. And I'm looking for scientists who can work with me. We are not making the mistakes of the past, uh, as we allowed some people get close to us. But you work within the structure of the scientific world, international scientific world with eminent scientists in direction of the plasma technology and development of new sciences and technologies. Uh, people who can go step further. People who can expand the knowledge and they can work in the dimension of the plasma, and not in the dimension of the matter state. We are looking into hundreds of scientists, we are not looking in one or two. Uh, China has become the center of excellence for space technology, and um, we are putting the things together, hopefully in the next few days. And we want to know, we, we like to know, those, Cash Foundation scientists who understand and can bring a new dimension into the school of thoughts. And then, there's a lot of possibilities. 100% you'll be based in Beijing, or around Beijing, and 100% all the total involvement will be in the plasma technology for peaceful application. And uh, so, as I said, we are looking uh, for scientists now, we, are, we have we have come to the point of um, everything is set up by the Chinese, ready to go. We invite scientists of the world to join us, and Chinese, and I'm looking for scientists of the Keshe Foundation. If you have achieved something which can show, and we see there is a possibility of the expansion to the benefit of the knowledge, you'll get invited here, and uh, the standard salary is paid by the, the standard procedures of the scientific organizations. These are the financings by the Chinese side of the Keshe Foundation. And so we are setting up uh, this structure, and I would love to bring Keshe Foundation technology scientists to join us in any field of science. 
of course, if you understand, as we have achieved peace, we don't need any weapon technology because there is no existence. We don't need that. But in the space, we are very looking for people who understand and does not have priority and privilege to nobody who's made some ganses and some machines. If he can show, if he can show physical effect that we can build on, or he can come up with a school of thoughts that we can get it experimented to see can be done and develop, we are in that position. And it could be anything from agriculture, space, environment, the health, and in all dimensions. So you become part of the, what we call, uh, universal scientist, gathered in China. China will become the center of excellence between Tehran and Beijing. We start building this thing up in the coming time. And in a way, we move, it's a reward of being peaceful nations, if you understand it. When you were a good boy, you were given a gift or a prize by the parents. This is the gift, those nations were the peaceful. And they, they, they fight for the peacefulness of the others. And so, you will see this, the, the initial structure here, uh, is to bring the world scientists to expand the plasma physics. We have, uh, from the Chinese side, no financial limit. There is no limit in what will be spent. As long as we bring new technologies, new sciences, and application of the peace. It's uh, what we call the peace dividend. When you don't spend money on arms and killing, you have money in saving life and developing new technologies. For those of you who are in the agriculture, of the Iran, we'll meet you tonight, uh, as is your time, as uh, the cash technology in agriculture and farming is expanding toward the Iran. Um, this uh, evening, we are teaching the Iranian farming and uh, farmers, in as they have adopted into uh, use of the gas technology in a big way. Uh, Today, this evening, if you are listening and you are part of that group, we'll teach you this afternoon, we'll, we'll be there this afternoon to improve on the harvesting where, uh, what do you call it, Iran becomes national self-sufficient in grain, as part of the Iran national food security, the same as China. And Iran has taken a big way uh, in the rice growing and things as we understand it, and I thank the Cash Foundation Iranian team for your hard work. and. Hopefully, as we teach the Iranian scientists, we teach the Iranian farmers, as they have started using uh, gas and gas technology in their uh, work to create a, what they call a self-sufficient nation for food. Jim, are you there? Are you ready to take over? Uh, yes, I am, Mr. Kish. Would you like to go on a step down till you finish? All right. Do you want me to go through both of them, or just the uh, one? You you want you can go through one today and one next week. It's all in your hand. Okay, so I'll do the okay. first part today. Thank you very much. All right, I'll leave it to you. Do you want me to stop sharing your screen? I'm just. Uh, Going to sort out quickly, and then I'll be able to. Okay. You're coming in. Yes, go ahead. It all clear, all right. Yeah, we see the Okay, rules. Um, yeah. So this is the first part, two parts of the, the paper. This is the first part. And uh, it uh, was there to sort of investigate um, the nutrition in the food and to see whether using the GANs would have any effects on nutritional values in the food. So 
I will just read through this um, in this bit of an introduction where modern agriculture conjures up a lot of debate around different farming practices. You know, does one till the land or not till the land? Do you only surface till the land? And then there's the grain organically versus uh, conventional chemical farming, farming using biodynamic principles or permaculture, um, grain food in soil versus grain food in water or hydroponics. So these are all the debates which, which are happening around the world today. And each one has its own supporters and naysayers as to which one works better than the other one. But I think we can all get lost in this debate because I believe we have lost sight of one of the main principles of farming, and, and that is to grow and provide the most nutritious food irrespective of how it has grown. Uh, when you go to your local grocer and uh, you see the beautiful array of fresh tomatoes or different vegetables, um, how do you know which one gives us the most nutrition? You know, what nutrients are we getting when we purchase a particular tomato? Because we don't see a list of nutrients on our tomatoes or carrots, um, so we're not sure what we're buying. But when we buy any other food or box of food from uh, the store, it lists its ingredients and nutritional values. So why are we not doing the same for our freshly grown produce? You know, the link between food and nutrition and our health is well established in an obvious connection. And we're told by nutritionists and doctors that we must eat a healthy diet, including fruits and vegetables. And they're correct, but how much of the fruits and vegetables do you need to eat every day to ensure that your body is receiving enough nutrition? If, any, if, if my food is so depleted of the vitamins and minerals, do I have to eat three times as much just to keep me healthy? And has the nutrition of our food declined so much uh, that this becomes a contributing factor to the poor state of our health? So the objective of this experiment was to determine if we can increase the nutritional value of plant using uh, GANS plasma solution. Uh, following this report details the methods that we used in soaking of the seeds in the GANS and then allowing them to grow and then conducting different nutritional tests on the plants. So I'll go through the method used. We um, used daikon radish seeds and we used two batches uh, for our, report, our testing. The first batch of seeds we soaked in the GANS and these will refer to the uh, plasma radish. The second batch we only soak those seeds uh, in plain distilled water, and then these will be referred to as the plain radish. So both batches of radish plants were watered with our standard nutrient, standard nutrient solution, which contains the following minerals. So it's sort of a typical formulation for sort of hydroponic growing. So there was calcium, nitrogen, iron, potassium, magnesium, sulfur. Um, so that was in our solution, which we water our plants with. Um, now, the development of the plasma science and technology, and especially in the, in the GANS, has its benefits on both plants and animals, and it's the leading edge of science today. Um, so with this report, we can't go into the depths of all the different uh, background technologies of, of this. So you obviously know the different websites that one can go to. All right, so what we did with our seeds is we measured out 35 grams of daikon radish seed. We then took one mol of the GANS solution and, and we put that into 500 moles of distilled water. And then we poured this water, see in figure five there, poured this water into the, the radish in the container which had the radish seeds. And then we placed this container on a warm heating mat, covered it up with another lid and put a blanket over it. And we left it there for 24 hours on sort of a low temperature to help with the germination. This photograph shows you the the seeds after the 24 hour period soaking in that water with the GANS. 
what we then do is we then just drain off that water and we then spread the seeds out onto a bed of cocoa fiber. Um, now the cocoa fiber contains no nutritional value at all. So we just put it in one of our trays, spread out 35 grams of seed there evenly across the entire tray. Then that's the picture of once we had um, allowed the seeds to germinate, that was of the early days. And there's just side views of um, the radish as it was germinating. Now, during the germination stage, we didn't add any, any water, further water. And once they'd reached the stage of about an inch, then we start watering. And what we had done was um, we watered sort of twice a day. And every time we use uh, 40 mils of our nutrient mix, but then on four occasions, um, we, we used an additional two mils of the GANS that we added to the water and we watered the radish with that as well. So we, we used very small amounts of the GANS when you look at the overall uh, amount uh, that we used with the, when you diluted it with the water. There's the picture of the radish that has grown after eight days. There's just two further side views and a close-up view of the radish after eight days of growth. Uh, the following pictures just show you the, uh, the root growth that, that is achieved. And um, this is something that we're always amazed at is, is the incredible root growth um, that we always see when we're using the GANS on any of the, the growing of different plants. There's a side view of the root growth as well. What we then did is uh, I washed the plants uh, to get rid of all the cocoa fiber and so we did this about 10 times each time refreshing with clean water to get rid of all the cocoa fiber because I was washing the, the plants with the roots so we didn't cut them as before and then we just placed them uh, in the spinner uh, a big automatic spinner to get rid of the water. We did this two times so that we just get all the excess water off the plants. So there the picture at the top is what we're left with is the daikon radish with all the, the clean roots and when we measured that mass from the tray it was 424 grams from our 35 grams of seed. We then did uh, just a couple of measurements of the plants just with the total root length. So there were various sizes of, of growth. It was nothing really on, on a consistent basis there. Uh, so that's what we had done. Um, so we had uh, then sent off um, 200 grams of the, the plant mass off to a uh, laboratory at the Southern Cross University here in Australia for plant tissue analysis. And then we had kept some more of the, uh, the plant, uh, which we're gonna use in the uh, Pfeiffer circular chromatography test, which we'll uh, explain next week on those results. And then the balance of the radish, we just put in the fridge just to evaluate the shelf life again. Now, so that was with the seeds, with the GAN solution. Now we did the same procedure again with uh, the radish seeds, but just with, in this case, plain distilled water. So again, we just added the distilled water with the seeds, allowed it to uh, soak overnight for 24 hours. So we followed the same procedure. This again was done a week later. I didn't do this consecutively, uh, well, the same day, because I wanted to make sure that um, we weren't exposing, uh, you know, trying to eliminate the effects of growing in a GANS environment. So th the first batch was done one week and the second batch was done the following week. And here are the pictures again of uh, the radish after eight days of growth. Again, the root mass 
also showed very good growth. And then again, we washed the plants to remove all the cocoa fiber, and then we weighed these plants. Uh, now this batch with 35 grams gave us 476 grams of plant mass. So that's slightly more than the plasma radish, 46 grams more. But because we had grown it over two consecutive weeks, uh, we were coming into our change of weather here. And so we have noticed over many years of growing that any slight change in the weather does impact our overall weight that we get every week. From, from our radish. So those conditions do affect it. And then we measured the roots of these plants. And then again, we sent off uh, 200 grams of the root of the plant to be analyzed. And we kept 50 grams for the chromatography test and then the balance was put in the fridge. So those are the two batches that we had worked with. Um, now, as I said, we'd done separate grain periods, one week apart, um, so that I could at least control uh, and finish what the growing of, of one batch, and then we started on the next batch. Um, our previous experiments had shown that when we use the GANS, the field effect of using the GANS is, is, is quite large. And so if we had to sort of try and overcome the field effect of using the GANS, we would have had to sort of grow on either another farm or at least 50 meters away. So I knew that by growing these radish plants within our environment, they would be exposed by the GANS fields that we had used on all our other plants and on the farm because um, there's bottles of GANS um, everywhere. So I wanted to see whether by not soaking the seeds, we could still see achieve some effect on the with the field environment of, of the GANS. And this test results don't show that, but on the chromatography test we'll show next week, we definitely see an impact on the field effect. So the samples were sent off to the laboratory, and these are the results that we got back. Now, the testing that was sent for, um, We'd gotten results back on the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, carbon, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and then some of the elements of copper, zinc, manganese, iron, boron, lithium, cobalt, and silicon. Now, I've created a few tables of these just so that we can show for comparison. It's a lot easier to read. So there's some bar graphs. So what we've done is the blue bars is the plasma radish and the red bars is the plain radish. So we can see when we look at nitrogen, uh, almost identical. The uh, phosphorus was the plasma radish was 1.5% and uh, the plain radish was 0.99%. Potassium was the only one that stands out where the plain radish had a higher value of 5% versus the plasma radish of 3%. Uh, sulfur was identical. Calcium, we'd seen quite an increase of 1.2 versus 0.64. Uh, magnesium was a lot higher at 0.81 versus 4.7. And then the sodium was also higher on the plain one versus the plasma radish. So those are those elements. I'd separated out carbon because it just distorted the bar graph. Um, so there's the carbon for the plasma was 44.4% versus the plain reddish seed of 39.6. And these are the rest of the elements that were analyzed. So we can see, again, the blue is the plasma and the red is the plain reddish. Now this shows milligrams of so copper per 100 grams. And there we have 43 of plasma versus 16 of the plain reddish. Zinc is 85 versus 50. Your manganese is 73 versus 49. Uh, boron was 25, 30. Lipton was very much the same of 1 and 0.9. And then cobalt 
again higher at 0.6 versus 0.2. These are the iron results, iron and silicon. Um, so the blue is the plasma, red is the plane. We have 310 versus 198 on iron and 523 versus 460 for the silicon. So what I've done is I've just done a summary here on the results. So it's a lot easier to read. So all the ones I've done, the plasma radish, plain radish, and then whether there's a percentage increase or decrease. And the green is where the plasma radish is higher value than the plain radish. And then the red is where we've seen a decrease. So when you look at that overall, we've seen an increase in the sort of elements within the plant, the plasma radish, compared to the plasma radish, uh, plain radish. And these are ranging from sort of 10 to 62% um, increase in the different mineral components of the plasma radish compared to the plain radish. So overall, we can see that using the GANs, we certainly are increasing the plant's nutritional potential. Um, and as we had used a nutrient solution on both batches of radish, this already gave them a good base of nutrient which was available for them. But using the GANs, uh, it had shown a marked increase in the uh, mineral values of the plasma radish. Okay, so now we looked at the comparison and valuation of the plant growth, just the overall visual appearance between the two. On the left, we have the uh, reddish grown with the GANs, and on the right, the reddish with no GANs. So visually, we don't see any, any sort of difference. In this case, the plain reddish looked a little bit taller, as I said, because of the different grain conditions from one week to the next. Um, but on the surface of it, they all look the same. The root growth was also very good on, on both of them, comparing the root growth. Really no difference between the two. Um, there's the bottom view, the side view. Um, now, these experiments we, we've done in our autumn period, so these are ideal grain conditions for our climate. And um, over many years, our experience has shown that during the heat of the summer and, and then during our cold winter months, we've experienced poor germination of our seeds in the past. But since we started soaking the seeds in the GANs, we've had a very high germin germination rate even during our very hot summers and winter months. And we always achieve the, the spectacular root growth uh, during these periods as well. Um, so, as I said before, we've always seen really consistent root growth in all of our plants that we grow when we use the, um, the GANs. The shelf life, um, there we just put some of the, say, the rest of the uh, radish plants um, into the fridge. Um, now, the shelf life is basically how long your produce will last in the fridge from, from the time that you harvested it. Now, this is critical for both farmers and the shopkeepers to have produce that lasts as long as possible. Um, now, prior to using the GANs um, when we were growing our radish, we only really achieved around 14 to 16 days from time of, of harvest um, to when the produce had turned yellow and was unusable. Um, and our previous experiments a few years ago showed that we had increased the shelf life to a minimum of three times. So we were getting up to 45 days um, where the plant was still looking very good. And in that particular experiment, uh, the radish lasted 180 days in our fridge before it had turned to uh, sort of a bit of a yellow mush at the bottom. Now, these sets of photos show the red, this is the radish, the, the plasma radish, uh, after 26 days in the fridge. 
So this was the 12th of May. So this had already been sitting in the fridge for nearly four weeks. And it still looks very, very good. This was the plain radish after 19 days. There's certainly a difference, um, a lot more yellowing of the plants when we compare to the plasma radish there at uh, 26 days. So again, it's showing the increase in shelf life of the plants using the GANS. These were additional photos that we took. So this um, photo at the top there was uh, 34 days in the fridge up until the 20th of May. And the bottom one was 27 days in the fridge. And there you can see it's now become quite unusable. And that was the plain radish at the bottom. So there, 34 days in the fridge for plasma radish that is still looking uh, very, very good to eat. So it shows again the, the benefits of using the GANs. Now, as we've said for the past couple of years, we've seen this extended shelf life uh, that the plasma radish exhibits. And we've seen now that with our test results, we've seen that using the GANs uh, and soaking the seeds with the GANs, we've increased the nutritional, the mineral content of the plants, so we've increased the nutritional value. Um, but one has to ask the question now, is the increase in nutritional value solely a benefit of um, uh, an extension of, of the shelf life? And through the understanding of the plasma science, all living beings, including the plants, you know, are all made of GANs. And each plant type will have its own magnetic, magnetical gravitational field strength, which is made up of trillions of cells. These are ganses with their own field strength. And the combination of all these plasmas gives us the overall magnetic gravitational field strength of the plant. Now, the addition of the GANs then allows the plants on an individual plasma level to increase their magnetic gravitational field strength. And I think we've show, we'll show in next week's presentation the real effects of this increase in the magrav strength that we've achieved on these plants. Now, the decomposition of plants, when we look at how what plants done are not lasting long in the fridge and are decomposing, they occur when the cells lose their field strength to the environment. And the lower the magrav strength, the quicker they will decompose, resulting in a shorter shelf life. And the higher the magrav strength of your produce, the longer the shelf life. Um, so the GANS is interacting with the plants on a sort of individual plasma level, giving and taking of the fields. And this effect of longer shelf life um, is really best achieved when the produce is treated with the GANS from the seed stage and throughout its growing period. Now, when we have a look at a bit of the history on nutrition of, of plants, um, some historical perspectives here, I had a look around and found some interesting information. Um, and many studies have shown, uh, done comparing the nutritional value of produce grown from 100 years ago to today. Now, this shows the nutritional value of a simple apple, simple apple sorry, um, over 78 years. So in 1914, when they did the analysis of the apple, the calcium was 13.5 grams and phosphor, iron, and potassium, magnesium. Now, they did the same test in 63, 92, and 1992. And as you can see, the decline in calcium is 48%, phosphor 84%, iron 96%, potassium was only one, magnesium was 82%. So over time, we've seen a steady decline in the nutritional value of just a simple apple. Another way to show this data was how many apples I would have to eat in 1992 to get the same nutrition as one apple in 1914. So for calcium, I would have had to eat two apples in 1992, 
for phosphor, six, for iron, 25 apples, potassium, one, and magnesium, six apples. So this just illustrates the decline in the nutritional value of a simple apple over the last sort of century. And I would love to do the test today to see where we are actually sitting. Another graph that we found was um, illustrating the decline of nutritional value of a cabbage, a lettuce, tomato, and a spinach as a combination, also between 1914 and 1997. And there we've seen the graph when they looked at the um, they took the um, average of calcium, magnesium, and iron in those four plants, and they totaled around 400 milligrams in 1914. In 97, it totaled 75 milligrams. So we saw a decline of 81% over those 83 years. Um, then to summarize, so one would have to eat five times the amount of cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, and spinach in 1997 to get the same nutrition that it gave in 1914. The decline in the nutrient value of our food is partly due to the degradation and destruction of our soils over the decades. We've gone from small-scale farming to commercial-sized farming to feed the world's population. Now, the use of fertilizers in the soils is like a drug addict who always needs another fix. And when you start down the road of using fertilizer on the farm, you eventually destroy your soils so that over time you need more and more fertilizers to get the same growth. And most farming today is unsustainable and food security for many nations is becoming a top priority. As there are many farming methods, so there are many ways to tackle this problem, each one coming from a different perspective. So a whole a holistic approach needs to be taken, one where we can increase the nutritional content of our food, while at the same time we can regenerate our soils, at the same time we can remove toxins from the soils, <coughs> while creating an environment where the plants, animals and humans are happy. Now this may seem far-fetched, but with the development of plasma science and technology for space travel at the Keshe Foundation, we know that all of the above can be done at the same time using the GANS technology. Now, as we've shown over the last century, the nutritional value of our food has really shown a steady decline. Um, it's not the plants that have changed so much, but rather the conditions in which they are growing. And this information of poor growth has unfortunately been passed on to each successive generation of new plants through the seeds. This information as magnetical and gravitational fields has been added to the DNA and RNA of all the seeds. Growing with these seeds today means we're starting then from a much lower base. This implies that the plants have the potential to provide us with very high nutrient values if given the right growing conditions. You know, plants growing in very poor soils and conditions um, will still grow, albeit looking small, unhealthy, and susceptible to all sorts of pests and diseases. This would be sort of your minimum condition for the plants to sustain itself. Um, and I believe this is what we are facing today in feeding the world's population. Now, plants growing in perfect conditions, not wanting for anything, will grow to their full potential, the best radish or carrot that it can be. And history has shown that the potential of the plants. Now, the results that we've shown of increased minerals in the daikon radish by soaking the seeds in the GAN solution is giving us an indication that we can increase the nutritional content of our crops allowing the plants to grow to their full potential. By increasing the health of the plant, you're also reducing the prevalence of any pests or diseases. Um, and the same comparison can be made in, in people, a healthy fit person will not be susceptible to, to diseases compared to a very overweight or unhealthy person. Now in previous trials conducted, 
by Mr. Keshe, the Keshe Foundation. It has been shown that soaking seeds in Gantz removes the layers of information of the conditioned environment of the past, and that um, soaking of uh, wheat seeds brought her back to its original grass. So it must be understood that we are not changing the genetics of the plant to achieve these higher nutritional levels. All we are doing is allowing the plants to grow and thrive under all conditions, and in so doing, the plants will have a higher nutrient level because the potential already existed in the plant. We're just allowing the plant to express its full potential. Uh, this application of uh, soaking the, the, the seeds with the gans, um, obviously the way I've done it is, is not commercially viable, but I think it can be done. Um, if we add the gans um, into a seed coating mixture that is currently used, artificial coating of seeds is used to improve handling and for the delivery of uh, protectants, symbiotic microorganisms and micronutrients, and germinating promoters. So all this has already been done um, into the seed coating that is, uh, of seeds around the world. And I think by adding in the GANs into this mix, we can then easily achieve uh, sort of ease of distribution of the GANs with the seeds, thereby eliminating an additional cost for the farmer to distribute the GANs onto his farm. The addition of micronutrients in the coated mixture with the GANs will allow a better connection to the seed and the plant as a whole. Now the GANs is added to the soil through the seed coating, thereby aiding in the overall regeneration of the soils and the microbial life in the soils at the same time. And this will have a long-term beneficial impact on the soils and environments plants and people. It's like for every seed that one puts out there, um, it's like a little Gans reactor that you are planting in that soil. So if you imagine thousands of acres of seeds with all that Gans there, will create incredible effects. And you, with that, your whole environment of the farm can be changed with the addition of the Gans. Uh, you know, my understanding it's acceptable, this will be an acceptable method of introducing GANs to commercial farmers who tend to be creatures of habit and don't like to change too much. Further in investigations, um, as we stated before, our plain radish was watered with our reservoir of rainwater, which does have bottles of GANs in the water. Um, the whole area in which we grow is many bottles of GANs and certain plasma devices which we've been playing with over the years. And so the question is, is how much of this plasmatic environment plays a role will require further investigations. And uh, some of the tests that we've done on the chromatograph show the effects of this, which you will see next week. Now, the health impacts on society um, eating produce that is grown with a GANs of an extended period will have a huge impact on the long-term health, both, for both physical and emotionally, of people. Our experience over the last three years in supply in our local area with the food grown with the GANs has shown some interesting behaviour patterns. We have built up a dedicated following of clients um, and Sometimes when we can't supply, the, gust the customers get quite upset um, that they can't get their um, supply of, of lettuce. And uh, it's almost like they become addicted to the benefits of, of nutritionally and emotionally uh, improved plant produce. Um, our demands over the winter colder months does not decline as much compared to the period before we started using Gans. So in conclusion, you know, using the GANS solution increases the plant's nutritional potential, allowing them to physically and emotionally thrive. The emotional benefits of using the GANS for the plants and the humans and those that we eat and cultivate is an additional sort of unquantifiable benefit. The results in these experiments are 
essentially a snapshot in time of the life of the plant. Um, the figures will change as the radish grows to maturity and throughout the growth stage. Now, the seeds collected from these plants will contain new DNA and RNA information for future generations of plants and potentially increase nutritional benefit even further. The increased shelf life of the plasma radish is confirming previous experiments that we have done. Um, the increased nutritional values can contribute to this effect, um, but I don't think it, it um, accounts for the, oh, the overall significance of the increase in the shelf life. And this is where the real benefits of using the GAN shows itself. You know, just by doubling of the shelf life will have a profound benefit for small scale farmers around the world. Their ability to bring their crops to the market with less waste will have a direct effect on the financial well being of the farmers and the community as a whole. Nations can grow the same amount of food today, but can feed more people as there will be less loss of food while getting it to the markets. And if the food is, contains higher nutritional value, then we end up with a healthier nation. Uh, further testing of this will, will be done, um, as this is just uh, one experiment which showed a marked increase in benefits of using the GANs on the seeds. And that is the end. If there's any questions. Thank you very much. Learned a lot. And it's extremely nice the way you've done things. The experiment with uh, interesting is what gas did you use for this? Just one? No. Uh, we had a mixture of uh, CO2, uh, zinc, CH3, and sea gas. It's the gas made with the seawater. Which means everything on this planet God has created. <laughs> yes. Uh, what we noticed over years experience is, uh, as we say, the horses for courses. Not all the ganses uh, apply and give the same effect to the same, um, how, same, what do you call it, uh, material. If you change your gases even by the ratio, or if you eliminate part of some gases or add some other gases, you can change the growth of the harvest, or you can reduce it. This time you see the reduction, but you see nutrition value increasing. The this is part of the research which we'll see coming up, is that we have to design specific cancers for a specific grain or product. And then it's not just because it applies to one, let's say, rice, it will apply to every other rice. Tailor making the ganses is part of the understanding of the technology and I think with it will come the nourishment. And uh, uh, what you have shown here in the past three years, we've seen data which you continuously produce with the experiments. It is very interesting because it confirms a lot of uh, things which we have considered to be happening now, we have it in physically there. And we've done some of these tests ourselves in the past year to see what elements has increased, what elements has reduced. In reality, um, I think if you, in your next trial, change some of the ganses. What you got to do is look at the natural elements in the product. Like the level of the zinc, the level of calcium, silica and the rest of it. And design your ganses to enhance those conditions. The way it is now is more or less randomly. 
the, the scientific world is, as we just seen you shown, shows the level of materials in the each product. So now that we become wise to it and random shot can be taken out of it, is okay. An apple has so much calcium in its, it's got calcium, potassium, blah, blah, blah. And then we use those ganses in that target. We can increase a specific, we want to increase the calcium in the in a fruit. We want to increase potassium in another one. Now that we have become knowledgeable, now we have to target. And this will show a totally different harvest. But we got to understand there is a phenomena, there is a logic in the world of the creation, especially of the plants, is that there is a certain size, a plant can carry so much on its leaf, for example, these radishes, that we do not go through the compromise of one to be less than the others. Protein shows a limitation, but everything else, if you increase magnesium, the plant might show reduction in potassium or calcium. Do we need that reduction? or we can compromise it. But in general, we see increases in a lot of materials, a lot of elements, but where you see usually reduction in one is part of the housing shared in that plant for, with another element. So if you see the magnesium with the potassium, if the magnesium goes high, does the potassium go high? But these two work together. So you have to decide. Each, um, each plant, each what you call, what I call the vertical people, have a capacity size. We might grow them bigger and then they have more of in percentage wise. And these are the things which we need to consider. Uh, and uh, we have to observe these nutritional values and as we see, we can target what we want to increase. Uh, the level of the materials we want, now that the knowledge has grown, we can go targeting what we want to increase. This is important because in the long run, we, on this planet, we are looking for using what our ancestors did. Now, we say we eat the same apple, you need to eat three of it to get this, so four of it to get the same as years ago. Now, with this technology, we can bring it to that time. Without any, uh, what you call, fertilizers or whatever. But, is our body ready to take four times more calcium now than before? Are the plants responding to man's need? Uh, Mr. Kesh, I noticed something here in, in relation to that. If you look at the two main ones that are uh, decreased, the potassium and the sodium, well, those are the things that people in life are trying to decrease in their diet. We're told to, to use less sodium and, and less potassium as the salts, you know, that people use too much of. So perhaps this is a way to reduce those items in the diet um, just through um, the produ produce that we're eating. So we it's a target. benefit in this case to have a reduction, is what I'm saying, rather than always going for an increase. You see, we get a lot of our things through the other plants or other food. Uh, the, 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 the body will find the balance of itself, but are the plants responding to our condition we have created? And uh, then they see the need of the man. You got to realize one of the beautiful things about vertical people is, you know how they stretch out their arms or the flower that uh, birds can see them or the, what do you call it, the, the flies or the bees can see them. They make themselves beautiful to attract. Are they, changing in a way that we get attracted to them. And is it what we need? 
and uh, there, there, there is a lot of research needs to be done. But in so many ways, um, the science of technology of the feeding uh, is changing. In the, in the coming time, I'll announce a lot of new development in respect to uh, agriculture, or what we call feeding of the nations. If we see this is the level of calcium or whatever, is this what happened when you put an orange on and you create the fields of it and then you taste the orange? And do we need to build so many factories and chemicals and pesticides to grow the orange? Where we can transfer the energy of the orange in the replication of the field across the city. This is how we're going to feed you in the space, why not start it early? Would we see people don't feel like eating? Because they already received the energy. There are some tests going on, which we are observing, we'll announce it in time coming, that uh, can we sort this, when we understand this, then we see what is there, become as part of the process of disaster relief, so really feeding the people, can we transfer antibiotics this way? Can we transfer energy of uh, um, growth of the soul of the man? Now we put people in prison, because of part of the condition between soul of the and the physicality of soul. Can we get away with imprisonment and reach the level of the soul of the man to the point that you you bring the soul to the point that it doesn't do any crime? You don't need to create prisons. Through nutrition, we can bring that point of peacefulness. There are no prisons in the universe. Why man has made it? Why do we? Uh, do all sorts of things to each other, because there is not there. It's the same with a lot of things. Food, and understanding of the transfer of the energy of what we consume, in the dimension of the energy to the Gans, is the only answer in the universe, or on this planet in the coming time. As they say, the man will spend more time for leisure than ever works, because his needs are met. This is part of what we call this new, what we call the research center for the whole, what we call excellent scientists, has started. And the aim is to get to that point. The, the structure which now we are working, uh, will bring the elite science of the planet to create a condition of peace for the world leaders, that the wars become the past. We can do it, but you have to understand how to interpret these data, how to use it. And as knowledge seekers, a lot of you are scientists. And you can come up, you can see a solution, why not? And if we can help you to develop it, help you to come in and bring it in, It'll be uh, different. In 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 the coming time, we'll make knowledge, participation in development of the knowledge, a pleasure to be part of, and not to be to pay to become. We you we don't need to have universities, and to understand the work of the Gans. We need to be educated in the universe of the knowledge of the universe, to understand the work of it. And with this is that these are beautiful, these datas, when we see it, understand it, then understand what it does. When you see increase in zinc, what does that do? What do we do with people with a mental condition? We give them more of one or the other. What about the ones who have difficulties? The, the work of the Keshe Foundation in medical application, 
through food or we call through energy has to become paramount and reports like this puts data on the table and because now we start these papers will be published in the uh, journal gradually I send people says you want to know research done is there as the scientist has done no peer reviewing and then we look at it we have to start interpreting data the way how can we change it and what do we have with the new knowledge that we can bring it about thank you very much james this is fantastic i uh, this is a gift for people like me who's looking for new solutions new ways and uh, your work has been fantastic thank you very much for your contribution and knowledge seekers it's my pleasure thank you Okay, right. Are there any questions you want to ask from Jim? Silence. I was wondering if Jim had any ideas why the potassium and sodium would have uh, decreased in, in the uh, uh, plasma radish samples well as you said earlier rick the, the decrease in sodium can be a positive um because of you know obviously also sodium in plants can be quite high too much sodium in the plant can be quite toxic um so you know to me this this decrease is, is possibly a positive when i look at the the boron changes there um, again, it's probably uh, upset here. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember where. But um, the boron and carbon are, are so close together um, that it probably is a bit of an interchange between the boron and carbon. Um, and again, you know, these are just snapshots in time. And if we'd taken the same set of results maybe two or three days later, we might see quite a difference here again. And I'm just going to add one thing here because I'm sitting next to Jim. Hi, everybody. It's Lisa. And one also has to remember that we do feed these, these plants a nutrient formula. And they are made up of certain salts because that's how hydroponic formulas of, uh, work. They, they are a mixture of, of salts and minerals. And so maybe by using the GANS with the nutrient, it somehow regulated the nutrients to what the plant wanted, possibly? Or to what the humans wanted, like Mr. Kesh mentioned. <laughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps you, do you guys have high uh, sodium and potassium levels in your blood that need to be reduced? Not that I know of, but, but maybe I must check because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> are are you using too much salt on your uh, meals? <laughs> You've got to tell me something. <laughs> Interesting, though. I thought that was a great comment that Mr. Kish made about that, that the plants may know what we need as humans. And from all that I've read, that's, you know, high sodium is a big problem for many people. That uh, leads to heart tension and that kind of thing. So perhaps this is the answer. And obviously, as Mr. Kish pointed out, the zinc, which is up 41%, the magnesium, which is up as the same virtually, 42%, calcium and so on, uh, but especially the zinc, which affects emotion and the, you know, the connection with the brain and so on. So um, that seems really important. Uh, if you're at the same time reducing the heart tension, the hypertension, the, all that hyper excitedness, but adding in the calmness and peacefulness through the zinc and so on, I think you have a, 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 an antidote to uh, many of the, the uh, issues in society now, which are related to those very things. So this is like, uh, this might be prescribed in the near future. Doctors will prescribe, oh, you must have... Uh, Plasma fruits and vegetables uh, are mandatory for you, and 
you know, make sure you always select the uh, the plasma radishes and the plasma potatoes when you select your vegetables next time when you're shopping. So perhaps this is the way to go. Well, I'm sure just like uh, places around the world, you know, you've got your organic section in the supermarket and uh, you will have your plasma section with all your <laughs> produce grown. <laughs> I, can plasma I think produce. that is coming up. That is, that's yeah. not some, this is on the card. This is this in the coming time, what we call the GANS technology farming. The bio uh, and, and uh, the GANS production. This is something we are talking about in many meetings. The new new way of new product we call the GANS product. It's amazing. A lot of people know about it. I had a extremely um, interesting meeting today. Uh, we were in a meeting and with the lady, and she was talking about. Her friend has told her about the GANS and this and that. And then she asks the people who were with me, who is this guy? Uh, and I said, this is Mr. Cassius. My friend has told me about it. Very normal condition. The technology has spread right across. And she says she knows it because she's one of somebody who reads about the technology has told her for she had a pain in her ankle. And they said it works. And she says, I want to know more. Uh, there are a lot of people are following, but we have to put the conditions right that people understand to, to do the right way. And I'm sure um, I looked at your data because when we use gases, we always look to increase the harvest. But uh, we see, as you said, we compromise between the quality and the quantity. But there is a way that you can increase both, but you have to find what does the radish needs to grow bigger. In wheat and rice, uh, we have the recipe. We know. Current trials show us clearly. So, you have to find what increases the, the what do you call it, the uh, production and how much by and why and what the just the, the 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 size or what do you call it the the weight of the material these are the things farmers can use themselves and see it there is a pest control section into the agriculture we introduce a, a pest control in a very effective way it we it's been tried, and uh, the process is very simple. Um, you can use the um, what we call um, the guns as a pesticide in a very effective way. If it doesn't work, you can design it. You design the process. And it works, because um, I show you, I have, uh, no, cannot go down. I have to go some other way. Just give me a chance. Uh, can you stop sharing, if you don't mind? I show you, because I know um, Jim had some problem, experience with this pest control with the frogs. And you can create a condition that you don't kill, but you you move them on in a very simple way using the understanding of the technology. I show you very simple. These are actually done. It's, this is a harvest. If you look at it, this is you can see the date. It's it's uh, this year, and then. You look at this one, yeah, now look at this, the day before, the day after, and look at 21st, totally gone. You can 
you can see at the bottom is the KFSSI research. And if you know how to handle it, this is a lost harvest, so how Palmer is done. You can see 19th of the 3rd, you see 20th and 21st, total cost in cents. But you have to understand, you can create the same condition in the springtime when you need the flies to come and pollinate. You can increase, there is a, there is a problem at the moment, they talk about the bees shortage and the farmers and the rest of it, but you can create a condition that allows bees to grow, to, 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 to be created, to be there. And these are the practical work which has been done. And you see it, in two days, nothing works, and nothing used, no chemicals used, just using the plasma technology. The harvest cleans up. It's the same process, we don't need to kill. And uh, understanding it, how to handle it. You change the environment. But the question is, did they fly to the farm next door? Because you can't find them on the floor, they're not dead. It's very, very interesting, how we have to uh, analyze and display these things. These are all done by Cash Foundation Knowledge Seekers. These are their farms, they tested. And no harvest lost, no farmer losing income. But uh, we have to learn, this is a beginning of a massive scientific revolution. Massive, it's going to touch us in every aspect, agriculture, health, energy. And can we make a unified system? Earth is a unified system, creates light, energy, shelter, everything we call it. And our knowledge has reached that point. We can do it, it's, it's, done. it's just knowing how to apply, and what to apply the way you apply it. It's, uh, it's interesting, even in the massive scale farming, we see huge differences, and uh, it's, these are controlled environments, which we are uh, part of the Cash Foundation, involved in. This is, uh, I'll show you, because we are part of one structure, um, this is what you see, harvest, this is before planting, and you see the difference. You can see, and if you go further, you don't need much to know what's the difference between the harvest. And you can't, you don't know, or you can't tell the difference between what we call uh, the rice, this is a rice field. This is a large scale rice growing. If you open up and look at the picture, you see the stems, and you see the stems. Plants is producing more, and is ahead by weeks. Gradually, you save time and energy and material. No fertilizer. If you look at the tip of the vegetation, you can see the difference, and you at the strength of it. We can, we can look at the thickness of the stems. But you have to tailor make these things. And then you see the harvest, if, you, if the target is harvest increasing, or the target is quantity, quality increasing, we can do all this, this now. It is the beauty of the new technology, and then you clean the land as um, James said. When, when you look at it, it's totally different. Now, we've done enough uh, broad teaching, now we have to get to a specific, 
and create that condition. That is specifically we can do. We, we need the harvest. Which harvest? What is the need of a nation? It's no use growing potatoes, but nobody touches potatoes. Hardly any. Thank you very much, Jim. It's fantastic what you put there. Thanks for that additional information. You're welcome. There is a lot to be done. Um, as I said, we are we are working. Actually, we were asked to start putting the scientific group together for research, and uh, how we're going to do it. And we try to make the research excellence center in China for the world scientists, and not only Chinese. This is needed that we spread the knowledge and the prejudices and the patterns goes out of the window, but it brings benefit to all of us. Is our uh, journal ready to go on, or do you still need the time? Mm, it is ready. Okay, shall we hand it over to you? Would you like to go ahead? Yes, I'm gonna share the screen. Does everybody see? Uh, yes, we can see that, Ella. Okay, that's great. Um, if I lose my voice in between, just I apologize, but uh, bear with me. <laughs> so, um, we are at the 12th edition of KF Plasma Times. So, we have a full year of journals that were published and first of all i would like to start with thanking everyone that has participated with articles with contribution to this magazine to to realize itself and to come to you all knowledge seekers so big thanks to the entire team that has worked very hard to to deliver these materials to you Okay, so Plasma Times, uh, from this uh, month, we dedicated towards agriculture. Uh, due to the beautiful uh, experiments that uh, Jim did, we have included the scientific articles also in this edition. So, um, in the Cash Foundation news, as we got used to already, we are putting articles which are derived from the teachings of Mr. Cash. So at the time when certain topics are explained, we are trying to make uh, these articles as educational material for each of you to understand the technology to and also to learn about, uh, about the ethos and about the things that are happening around the foundation. Uh, the first article that we have is um, about carbon-14 conversion to deuterium with the usage of glands. Um, and also from the carbon-14, we have the information about Magrav being a converter of carbon-14. Um, so it's a very nice application for, for the Magrav units that were taught uh, some years ago in the blueprint. Um, we also have the article regarding the duality of existence. Uh, of course, because we had so many teachings about uh, Carbon-14, we had to structure it in a certain way that uh, all the teachings make, uh, make a certain uh, sense. So you will see a lot of articles probably on a certain topic, but it all depends on the uh, amount of information that we have, which is a lot. In the KFSI education, uh, we have tried to publish a lesson plan. And this would describe um, the new way of teachings in the KFSA education, the way we would like to go forward in uh, teaching in English or in languages. And that is very easy 15 to 20 minutes lessons. Um, so the teachers are preparing a 15 to 20 mi uh, minutes topic right on point about uh, the subject, which follows with a portion of Q&A that comes from the students for more explanation on the topic that was presented to them. 
So this is the first article of this type. And um, for all the teachers that are now teaching, if they would like to embrace this approach, then we have the education team that can support with more information on this. In the plasma products, um, we wanted to bring back the reminder about the GANs capturing kits, um, which we know that they uh, <laughs> produce millions of sun in one container. Um, we have uh, presented here the contents of two types of GANs capturing kit. Um, complete GANs capturing kit, with which you can do uh, multiple types of GANSes, four types, the basic ones and the simple CO2 uh, capturing kit with a procedure about how it can be used. In the language community, um, this month uh, we wanted to remind everyone that is out there working with the Keshe Foundation, working with the technology. We know that you are doing so great work as knowledge seekers, but we would like that everybody can hear you. So we encourage everyone from all the language communities to come forward with the project that they are working on, um, just to share with the world and to make themselves heard. So please contact us if you would like to, to be part of the team of the Cache Language Community Teams. In the Plasma Scientific Journal, um, we have two articles and they are from Jim. They are very beautifully documented articles. Um, the first one is regarding the field's interaction within plant tissues. And this uh, will be presented by Jim uh, next workshop. And the one that was presented today to us, uh, which is growing nutritious food using GANS and its benefits. The investigation to determine whether using the GANS on seeds can improve the nutritional value of the food. So this is the presentation that you heard uh, just before. Okay, uh, next section would be testimonials. And we received a very nice uh, testimonial from uh, Elizabeth. And it's about an experiment that she tried regarding um, the efficiency, the cleansing effect of plasma fields on solid matter. So she basically did a little bit of a test with many stains and uh, with some combination of ganses. So please read the experiment. And if you have ideas, then we look forward for a scientific article on this experiment. So we can all try different possibilities. Regarding the category join us, uh, we are still in need of hosts. So we can never have too much hosts <laughs> um, that can help with the, um, the teaching. So if anyone has a few hours in a month to spare and would be able to participate to the class as a host, then uh, please send an email to education.kfsi.org and we will be happy to receive you in the team. Um, the same for the Plasma Scientific Journal. Uh, many of you are working a lot, are working hard, are working for many months, but we would also like to make your work known and published. So please send us your Plasma Scientific Journals and they will be published in Plasma Times. The same email address is education.kfsi.org. And last but not least, do not forget about the books. Uh, they contain a lot of information and we have them available on Amazon via Kindle Amazon. Uh, it can be downloaded on any kind of device. So you simply need to install the application and you have it on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. The books can be with you at any time, anywhere, and we encourage you to read them. And that's about it for this month. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ella. Thank you for your hard work in the Plasma Times and so on, the uh, editing and arranging all of that. Thank you very much, Ella. It's a lot of work has been going on, a lot of work is completed, and um, hopefully in the coming days, we'll complete a lot of other things which have been outstanding for a long time. Are there any questions or we just nearly into three and a half hours of time of teaching? 
Yes, I realize we're getting uh, getting on there. Um, Mr. Kesh, uh, Jay had a question in the Q&A and uh, really wanted it answered. Uh, he asked, Mr. Kesh, in the story where the creator says, let there be light, uh, were, were there any forms of life or humans on earth before the light we see today was created? I think you misunderstand the writing. As I said, man is too physical. <clears throat> when you hear it says, as a creator, let there be light. Light is the soul of the man. I made man in the image of myself. So, when you say that there be light, it means that it be the soul of the man's existence. I made man to worship me, to confirm my existence. That's what it means. It's not the light as the stars or a solar system. These are, now we understand the position of the soul of the man, and the existence of it, and in interaction uh, with it, it can show. There is something which is fundamental for us to understand, is that, how do you know the earth exists? Unless you put it in front of the another interaction of the field which has led to its creation. When we put the gravitational magnetic field of this earth in front of the gravitational magnetic field of this sun, we see the light of the sun. And with it, we see the light of the man. Is the, of the earth, is the light of the earth confirms the existence of the sun? Or does the sun, through the creation of the earth, confirms its own existence? So, the light, what we call the daylight, is the confirmation of that. The existence of our soul in the presence of soul of the Creator, shows the light, the creation of the light. But when our field interacts with it, confirms that it's brighter than us, so we exist, even being smaller. It's in the writing, it says, I made man to create children and they may love me. That it confirms me loving myself, that I can create to be loved. So, when you say, there us be light. When there's a light, it means I confirm my existence, there is no need, there is nobody to see the light. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Kesh. And this is Azad. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, when you talk about detachment, uh, is it the same thing as identifying, for example, um, I can identify with my job, I can identify with my position, I can identify with what I wear, what I eat, uh, where I live. Is the same thing or is different? Because if I if I say, for example, I'm a doctor, you know the way you stand, you know you look at a lot of doctors when they stand up, the position they're standing, they take the identification uh, the, of a doctor. So they stand erect and they they take pride of it. But if you take the position identification from them, uh, they don't stand like this. So. Uh, detachment is the same thing as not having identified with what we have. Like, for example, what we do, what we have, what not we have. And detachment is the same thing. And if detachment is the same thing with identification, how can we accomplish total detachment? Completely. Because we live in a, on this planet, on, on a daily basis, we have to go about doing our job, like uh, in, a, in a workplace, in a market, uh, in, a, in a living process, we live in a community. How can one go about complete detachment in the process of living and being normal?
Right there, Mr. Kish, I'm not hearing you. You see, part of our life is always attached to something. That's how we manifest ourselves, that's how we are identified ourselves. Detachment, you become detached from something, but you get more attached to something. And then it's how much you want to be detached from one point, to be attached to another. Mr. Kesh, this is exactly happened to me. What you're talking about happened to me because I'm detaching, but I realize I go and attach to something else, like, like a magnet. So it confirms our existence. So how can if we are not attached to something, how can we confirm the existence? Even as I said, the, the Creator created the soul of the man to confirm his own existence that is attached to be loved. So the, you, only, you the only attachment is worth living for, is loving. Now when the man understands this, Man has matured. Okay, so we can, if we attach only to love, that... You see, love is not kissing and cuddling or whatever. Love means giving unconditionally. And then in the process, you come to the point that uh, you receive for what you need. And another thing I was I was uh, I was pondering on thinking about you see when you talk about the soul in the cage until until now that we became conscious of our soul this soul was in a cage it's just like having a bird in a cage at home and not knowing even having a bird and just passing by it every day not giving it water or food and just ignore it that's what's happening until now now since we know there's a bird in a cage, now we start to uh, feed it and pay attention to it. So that's how we can make it grow and enrich it. Am I correct? Maybe something I can say, one of the biggest achievements, one of the biggest points of all these teachings, the new revelation, is for man to understand the existence of his soul within the physicality of the man. And is responsible for it. This is the most, maybe this is the only reason we came. But we had to take different roles to teach the man this. And if we learn that, and we learn that it doesn't need to be fed by a physical life, we can find a path to feed it or nourish it through the dimension of energy of the universe. Then we succeeded. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. You see, detachment doesn't come in, I'll give everything I have away and everything else. I have this face every day. We let everything of the foundation to go that we could bring a lot of new dimensions into it. And by detaching from what we became attached to, we are given more opportunities to be able to serve and spread and develop. We became detached with mean, the cycle which we had to bring the technology into, and then through it, we became a condition of a lot of people understanding the technology and for us to to become part of the structure of a planet. We, due to the conditions that was created for us, I let everything go around the foundation, because it was something which I wasn't here to do. But, by letting it go, the governments came to understand 
they need it to be done for what it was let go. I let it go physically, but I captured the soul of the nations, the soul of the world leaders. And I, I see that clearly in the whole work of the Foundation. It's very hard for people to understand how, how it works, but I go through the emotions of the touching, letting everything go, but I ask governments, I want more, because when I have more, I can serve more. And somehow, nations have started listening. I don't want it for myself. I want to change the life of humanity. We let production, factories, everything, because we could see problems. But in that time, and all the Keshe Foundation supporters who stood with us to go through this transition, allowed us to capture the world leaders, the governments. As I said, just watch this space in next coming days. We pass the weeks anymore. And then you will understand. By detaching from the, what we went through, we became attached to a bigger scale, which does what we wanted to do. We get attached by choice of the soul. We get detached by the choice of physicality. And then the scale of the work changes. The, the scale of understanding changes. Be when you, this is what, if I could ever let the Keshe Foundation supporters to understand, we are detached totally from physical dimension. Just enough to live. I, I, whatever comes in the Foundation goes to anybody who can support at a time when he's there, and keep a very, turning over time, and then we attach bigger souls. They come because they, they, it comes on its own, I don't ask, because if it's not happening, it means it's not the time for it. And because it's not the time for it, I've become detached because over years I've learned, it means it's not time for it, you're peddling too much. You're fighting for something which is not time for it. And then, even the next day is the time for it. And he comes and say, I've worked so long to get this done, and now... And then, if you stand back, you see, it had to be the other piece of jigsaw, had to be, this is the one that's fitting now. It needs a lot of understanding of detachment. And then you find you actually get attached by the souls of the man. And then you go to the next step. Uh, the, we will set down to change the course of humanity through the soul of humanity, not through the pocket and physical. The prophet of the past, they came through the pocket to the dimension of its skeleton, that's why we see all this crisis. This time, as I said before, we change the soul of the man, by the man himself. If you go back to the teaching of years, past years, I always said, we have to change that every man knows there is no need for war, by himself to achieve that point, not by the point of force, pressure and whatever. It is a part that we learn. We have no choice. The, the cycle of the soul of the universe will, has brought us to that point. It will be, it'll be interesting to see mankind in 10, 20 years. It's interesting to see, are we still going to sit in these cars? Are we still going to sit in these homes? And are we going to suffer for two weeks' holidays? 
I work two weeks a year, but I serve humanity and I serve a man who's in pain or whatever. I spend the other 50 days do what I enjoy to serve. Where we, there's a lot of maturity coming out. It's not just in the foundation, it's coming right across the planet because we, had, we talk through the soul of the man, not through the dimension of physicality of the man. And maturity is coming through. It's, we still have to be busy. We still got to go to work. We still got to do something. The, the rent is not to be paid. The, the house needs to be there. You can't say, I feed you through my soul. But if you become wise enough, you never have a hunger to feed the physicality. This is the change which is about to come. As I said, and I say it again, you are making a shelter for the soul of the man in the universe, not a shelter in the physicality of the man for the soul of the man. If you listen to all the teachings, especially in the past 10 weeks, we are going in that direction. But because you're, you're not aware of the change, to you looks everything the other way around. We cannot uh, change everything on this planet. It's such a small thing, it's a speck of dust to change, to put the whole universe to change for mankind. Mankind has to change to fit the universal community. They have everything, they know how to handle the soul, they've been, they've been educated in the work of the universe. It's us who strives to become part of, so we have to understand how it is. If you want to be, a, a, let's say, as you said, a doctor, you have to study the medicine to understand what it is and how you can be part of it. We have to understand the work of the universe with the universal community. And then we can go in. And the only way to go to do it is to through the soul of the man. This spaceship is just because you want so much of it. You want to have physicality, I want to fly. One of the knowledge seekers has found a trick, and he's playing with it. And it's so nice to see how he's playing with it. How he's playing with the soul in conjunction with the systems. We need to understand. We need to understand the work of our own soul. And that's all it is. Thank you, Mr. Keshe. You're welcome. Uh, there's a few more questions left, Mr. Kesh, but I, I realize it's getting on here. We're at uh, three hours, 45 minutes or something. Would you like to end the uh, workshop now or? Yeah, let's see what it is, what are the questions. Okay, we have one from um, uh, Doug from earlier. It's kind of a, a comment and question. He would like to get your comment about it. Uh, he mentions that it's about suicide is not murder, only if the soul makes the decision and chooses the method without outside assistance. I'm not sure about that statement, what that means, but he's, he goes on to say, sometimes police officers attend a house where they find a deceased old couple in bed together. The house is neat and tidy and they chose to leave the physicality together. Police cry with love when they see such a situation. And then he asked, maybe Mr. Kesh would like to comment on this. Uh, 
You see, suicide is not allowed because you have decided to terminate between the soul and physicality, even if it's yours. It's the same as killing somebody else, it's the same. Thou shalt not kill, you're not only killing others, you're not allowed to kill your own. You are not allowed to create a separation between the soul and a soul of physicality. Doesn't matter in what dimension. And it is horrendous when you see it, if you feel it, if you understand it. It doesn't matter if you're an animal or a human or in a space. This is not separation of two souls leads to the generation of the two souls. Unless they have tuned to be by themselves. You have a mother and a child in the womb of the mother, two souls. The soul of the mother is ready to release, to accept the separation from dimension of physicality. That's why the child is born. I explained this before. But the child has to reach, has to reach a point of soul mass to be able to do it. We say children are premature born because we look at the physicality, but is the soul matured that doesn't need the dimension of physicality, even it looks to us the born handicap. Maybe the soul of that handicapped child is much stronger than yours and mine, because it has reached a point of maturity. Why do some children get born early? Has the soul reached point of maturity? faster, so they're already mature when they come, because one of them, Armand, if you see, you know why he is physically seven months, but in the soul is much mature than many of us put together. Do we decide the dimension of the soul, which the physical life does, then the dimension of physicality? We cannot separate ours or the others, but time and balance can be done by itself. That's why we get old and we age. But the question to ask is, how come we're lasting longer than before? Has our soul become greedier, or is our physicality giving a bigger bribe to the soul of the man to stay long? What's the purpose of extending life? Do we gather a stronger soul? Or does the soul of the man stays? These are the questions which in time and will answer. We have to answer, we have no choice, we are part of it. Okay, thank you. We have a question from Rene. He has a question about fields. If we produce a GANS, then this GANS produces a field. What do I need if I want to produce the exact opposite of this field? Do I have to make another GANS or can I convert this field? Thank you in regards from Austria. Uh, the answer is really easy. You're again like this man standing here and looking at the star and saying, I see the light, how can I go to it? You forget, you, there's a magnetic field going back to the, to the star. It's within the Gans. When you see a Gans, it's not just a Gans, it gives fields out, it gives a field from you back to it, it's taking from you. It's taking from you what is stronger, for it that it takes, it gives you what you need to be stronger to exist. And that keeps the line of connection, that's what you call love. 
I give to you what you need, and you give to me what you, what I need, but no condition. This is part of the structure of the creation. We don't make agreement with every star in the universe. I see that the star, so if I see it, it means it has created the condition of the field, because I receive from it, I'm weaker than it. And at the same time, that star is taking from me, because it confirms its position of existence. We have become very passive. What you see, it means there is a line of the field to us. And if you think you are the only one he sees, you might, on the other end, you, you give what it needs. Life, in the universe, in the dimension of anything, is a barter. I give you what I don't need, you give me what I need. It's very simple. Okay, Dan uh, says, no more prophets will come to us, but what do we do to fulfill the prophecies that must be fulfilled? Um, All have been fulfilled, you've been blind to it. What about the Third World War and... Uh, oh, that prophecy, was it done by the prophets? Did any prophet speak about the Third World War? These are the prophecies of man, that they, they do something with it. Mr. Kesh, good morning. Yes, Mrs. Kesh, good morning. <laughs> you keep on referring that we know what we do. But in another way, if you're bringing so much knowledge, doesn't that explain, on the other hand, that we don't know what we're doing? Or that we don't know what is around and about, in so many ways? If the souls are communicating, how come we, in person, are not aware of all these communications? What's the reason behind that? You said, we've seen mankind diverting to there. We, we make the decision, how do we bribe for our soul, for us to live longer when we are not even aware of it, that we are doing this? Then how is this process getting done? Because if you can give us an example, then maybe we can open those doors more towards it. Hello? I'm listening. Because we're all living by pattern, and as uh, <clears throat> people, knowledge seekers have said in the past, they're searching, they're trying to understand, but we are so, so surrounded and submerged in survival mode, we have to take care of so much. I, I was explaining it yesterday. Just take a mother, if it's a mother who takes care of family, with children. It's a 24-hour job, it doesn't stop. Unless she can put her head down for a few hours and when she get up, the, the cycle just restarts. There is no nourishment of calmness anywhere at this given moment available. Where can even people just take a breath and say, ah, you know something, I'm out of it for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Let somebody else take the whole responsibility of all that. 
on top of them. A lot of people, youngsters, <laughs> I, I give, I was trying to give a good explanation with, you remember the 60s when so many people became gypsies and God knows, free life. And then there came a very funny comment on it and said, because they didn't know. I said, that's exactly my point. They didn't have to know anything. They just set themselves free, enjoy music, colorful clothing, going out, creating friendships, having babies. There was like a complete shutdown. But I think that was one of the most beautiful periods of where humanity chose to go to a part of creation of freedom, to set themselves free from these shackles. There was uh, the, the generation who did it. We all know Woodstock and what the freedom brought for that generation, but our children, if I said I'm passing universities, when you see people passing, these are our future generation and they, they're like mommies passing. They don't smile, they don't laugh, they have no pleasure. They're just like going in a military shape form to conduct something and then to come out and to go home and to do more work. But they haven't chosen for that. It's, the choice has been made for them. Our children are no longer children. Our parents have no more time for themselves. That was my reason why I was asking you. We have to break the chain somewhere. Carolina, can I, I say something? Yes, yeah, sure. You see, when you talk about, when you talk about uh, people don't have time and somebody is raising children or we're doing survival mode because that's, that's the problem because once you start thinking about everything is survival, then there's no life. But when we live, when we have life, even somebody who takes care of a child, that's life. I mean, the only thing is we think is work because there's no such a thing as work and non-work. Everything we do is just, we have to be alive. Once you're alive, no matter what, what's on you know, your plate, you just do it. And then you don't get tired because everything is a pleasure. And the reason we think about that because they, we think we are responsible for only for things that we do. But for example, if I say I'm responsible, it means I'm responsible for everything in the world. It means I have, I have unlimited responsibility, but I have limited uh, responses because my response can be limited, but my responsibility is worldly. I'm responsible for the whole universe. So when I take that, when I step out of the door, uh, if I have a child to take care of, I would take care of a child. If I see something else, I see my capable, I do it too. But the only thing is, we think everything is work, but it's not life. Life is just, is, everything is life. Even taking care of a child or running 24 hours, but the minute you step out of that uh, mentality, because this is a physicality, we decide, we define this is work, this is not work, I want to sit for a minute. Because even the time you're taking care of a child, your life and you're enjoying it so much that you don't even get tired, you don't have to sit for a minute. That's how we, de that's how we, uh, we define it, so that's the thing. And talking about the soul communication, if you're not listening, you're not hearing the soul, but you can listen, the soul, uh, soul communicate all the time, we can hear it. But the only thing is, it's just like a pipeline. You know, if you have your pipeline is cluttered with the, for example, a stuff in it, there is no communication. If you have a, a faucet or something, water doesn't go down, it's clogged. When you open it, there's a, a direct communication. You just have to open that. Once you open it, it's a constant communication. I mean, on a regular basis, because every moment, every walk you do, you just have to uh, breathe slowly and be life, life itself. Life itself is, is 24 seven joy every, in every single cell. That you just don't, it doesn't, even in your the moment of uh, so much work, but you feeling so much joy and you don't know where is it coming from. And there's no tiredness. 
it just uh, conditioning the body because physicality can, uh, because I have gone through this experience, physicality goes through so much emotion in the past. If you're gone, it blocks everywhere that there is no life in it. it become like a rigid, like a just a, a, a broken tree or a dead tree. But once you release all those energy from the body, let the body move in a correct direction. It's just like a live, uh, just tree, just with every breeze, it moves the leaf and everything. Everything you do, you just, you can feel it. You can feel everything. You can feel everything that you surround. You, you can feel by the tree, you feel it. You can even uh, hear the soul of the trees. Is is fascinating how we when we change the physical soul, everything changes, everything shifts. But the problem is we have to find out what is it that we gather through our lifetime, to our experiences, to our uh, growing up, uh, our parents' conditioning, the society, what believing, what we are told, and release all those emotions from our system, our physical soul. Once it's released, then the connection start to come in. It start to come in. You're just no, uh, nourishing it. I don't know if I'm being clear. Oh, I do understand you. But if you look around you, um, the positioning of our future children or next generation, doesn't matter, in 10 steps, 10 eight different ages, they have no taste of life. They are getting trained to be as numb as possible. But that's why we're changing it, you know. So once we change, the change would come in. Because if you look at the new children, the new children, if you look at them, they're totally different. I mean, they're not going for what the parents went for. I mean, because we create a new environment for them. I mean, this is, this is our hope. Well, at least I think. You see, if you look at it, when I look at when I was young, my parents said, they're wasting their life. Oh, what is this you do? What is that you do? You don't do this way. You don't do that way. See what it made us, us this new generation. And if you look at it, those of us who are in, 40s, 50s, and 60s, we are the ones who made these nations. Our forefathers, our fathers set the ground for it. The new technological development changes to where we are now is done by our generation and by our father's generation, not the generation before. And in so many ways, we built on our generation for what's such a rapid revolution and evolution in science and technology in everything else is our generation, 60s, 70s, when they told us you're absolutely hippies, you know nothing, black, you know, long hair, torn jeans, this going every night. And if, if those of us who did that way has made such a condition now to become more materialistic, yeah, and build all these buildings, these old industries, technologies, sciences, even philosophies, we haven't done that bad. Why do we think where our children are going? They go to much better places than we did. They did not need to work. They don't need to worry about the uh, electricity bill. They don't need to worry about where I'm going to get the next food. Because with the teachings of today, we have made the ground, their soul is aware that our soul has worked the physicality out, that they're going to have such a beautiful life. I think our next generation are going to live the lap of luxury. I think our children, our grandchildren, from what is coming, what is about to come, the life will change. There is an industrial revolution. It's a soul revolution. You are not aware. There is a lot of holding back, but there is a lot of going forward. Our children have to play these computer games. They have to understand this world of imagination that when the reality comes, it's not aliens to them. We are preparing our children. In a way, we say all these crazy computer games they play. But if you think beyond it, forget about this animal as this killing system they put into these machines, games. But 
looking at the totality of the structure, we are preparing our generation that they will not touch any war games, but we are preparing them to be ready for when it comes. We, the, our generation was ping pong ball on the telephone or in the computer. Now our generation, our children, are beyond what we could even imagine that time. They're going to have a fantastic time. They are, we are preparing them with these computer games, we are preparing them with the knowledge we put in for the soul to, the soul is aware, the change is coming, we have to be as fast as outside. For us to change a gearbox is too much. They rapidly play 100 different games every second and just watch the television nowadays. I love watching football, but the new generation, they go to stadium, thousands of them, watching how fast the other one can play the computer game. I can watch it on television, but I go to be part of. Football is too slow, because the soul is getting ready for the speed. We are, we are preparing our next generation, but we don't see it. The soul is aware of the change to come. <sighs> Look at the streets. We're putting how many millions of cars a year on the street? Hundred years ago, they were all donkeys and horses, and we walked barefooted. In next hundred years, these are the things as part of the evolution. They live a life, we don't need these cars, we can do different things. We are, when I look at the new generation in their teenagers, they are the ones who are going to benefit by all the teachings you are doing, all the ganses you are doing, people who are coming into it and finding new energies, finding new way to, to explain it, to do it. We are preparing our children for the future of the technology we are, we are, we are about to release and it's going on. And uh, I don't think our future generation is going to suffer. I don't think our future generation is going to have a bad time. They're going to have a fantastic time, but we are training them. Our society is training them for a fast life, a speed of light, beyond the speed of light. We we have chosen that path, thanks to Nintendo and other computer games. I know it's rough. Huh? When we were young, our parents said, oh, you're wasting your time listening to those bang bang music, what is going on, and why do you go to discos till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning? I, I think most of us born in the 60s, 70s, 80s, know exactly what we're talking about. That freedom, allowed us to create a new freedom, but not everybody understands our freedom can change some things for the others. It's not, it's not bad, the next generation is going to be one of the best generation. Our children in teenage years are the ones which are going to see the fruit of the peace. These are the ones which then they have the tools they have the knowledge, they have the expertise to become part of the universal community, because they, they have learned from time coming, the arms are not there, they'll be brought up in the land of evolution of new sciences they can be part of, and it's fantastic. I don't see the youngsters of today, even a lot of parents think, they're wasting their time. We are preparing them unknowingly, knowingly, right across the world. You go to Africa, in the villages, they still play Nintendo. They all have these telephone games, the same game as the guy plays in New York. He pays for it, he hacks it, but at the same time, it doesn't mean his knowledge is lower. And we are preparing our children, we have created that environment. It's a beautiful time coming for our next generation. What we dreamt about of one day will happen in centuries, we have created a condition that happens with our children before even we leave this planet. Many of us will see the evolution of the soul of the man. Is uh, uh, they 
the only thing they will learn is um, how to be peaceful. I was watching something yesterday. In the United States, 28,000 people have been shot. And when they put the map of America with the shooting which goes on, it's all red dots. Do we have that in Iran? Do we have that in China? Do we have that in Australia? We, we are learning through so many things that the wireless doesn't pay. The games will change. I see the games becoming, at the moment, if you look, it's one pattern. Kill as much as you can, jump as much as you can, but these are the speeds which brings the condition of the knowledge. I don't agree with the wars and the things, but in the long run, we are preparing these children uh, for the high speed reaction, living expectation of beyond. Nothing to them is strange. Nowadays, you just look what's going on in Europe with the football. Hello, Mr. Keshe, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. What are we looking, what, if you look, it's, it's, I'll tell you something. In 1976, I, when I went to Manchester from London to study, I came to know a Pakistani guy. Extremely Pakistani looking, you know, mustache and dark skin. And he was a football lover, like me, he said, we go to see Manchester City. We went to the match on a Saturday afternoon to watch Manchester City playing. The time I was standing, those times wasn't seated, I was standing. I can say, I can't even know the number of coins they threw at him. He was a foreigner. It was a shame to go. I said to him, why do you go here that you get attacked like this all the time? He said, I love the game. This doesn't matter, I can take 10 coins, 20 coins hit at me. And when the black footballer in 1976-75 came on the ground, the whole opposition, if you go, they used to go monkey book. <laughs> and it was a shame to be. Now, you look at the football, it's all black players. Even in Germany, that Hitler was so racist, I, said, I watched by Munich and I watched the others watch playing and it's a lot of black players. I said, he must be turning over his grave. And now we see it emerging again. The racism is coming back into the football. Why? If in the Western world, the color of the skin of the man is important for the man who wants to go to enjoy, it means the man is not matured enough. Then what do you do when you see a Martian green and pink and blue? Man has not matured. In 40 years, 45 years, with everything became punishable, if you do this punishable, it hasn't changed the man, he's still blues, and you hear what happened in Italy and in Germany and in European games in past few weeks. The racism has gone beyond. Because the clubs are paying so much money, trying to bring people in and they lose. Where do they divert the anger of the loss of the mismanagement on the black guy on the ground? Or whatever. So, this is what I say, it's no use teaching the man, changing the man, taking the arms out. We have to change the soul of the man. And the clear example of it is what we see now. Clear example of it. It's one of the most beautiful games in the world, has become so much entangled in racism. And the color of the skin of the man is still a problem for the white man. We got a huge problem going. We haven't changed it. It's no use we creating peace when there is still in the habit of the soul of the man is war. Killing. 
Um, you got to understand, mankind needs to be wise and prudent, and learn the benefit of the peace. When I look at the uh, China, when I look at Iran, when I look at the countries who are advancing very rapidly in science, in technology, in what they call it, nation building, even though the others trying to force it to create a condition is bad, are the nations who have the finances to work through the peace. Even though part of that, this peace is to create a defense that we can keep the house quiet at peace. If you don't put these huge sanctions on Chinese commodities, all called Mr. Tariff Man, as he calls himself, President Trump, who's paying for the damages? Americans. You have to understand why America, why President Trump is putting so much pressure on other nations. America has borrowed billions of dollars over the past 30, 40, 50 years, and Chinese have bought the papers to support them, and then they have to borrow them. So now the papers are coming payable. There's a lot of debts of America, which has been bought on borrowed times from other nations. Papers are becoming payable. They're due. It's like you have a mortgage on the house, and the mortgage is due 1st of June. You sell the jewelry, you sell the car, anywhere to have the money to pay the bill. These, what they call Mr. Tariff Man, doesn't tell the truth to his nation. Bills America has borrowed for 40, 50 years are coming to uh, flourish and have to be paid. The only people who can pay is the Americans is a cash on delivery. A thousand dollar per person in America, per family, pays for the interest of the debts the fathers and themselves borrowed to have a luxury house in their life. They don't tell the truth to the people. And then what does it do? They have to push for wars to sell arms that they have the money in guarantees they can borrow more money just to keep the nation. The American government, the American society was going to collapse under the debts they borrowed to create so much war. The, you you say why the Americans are pushing with the tariff straight away? Suddenly tomorrow morning is the Chinese, uh, Canadians, and then tomorrow is the Mexicans. The day is after uh, Indians because the reality is that debts are coming due payable, and the only way you can do you can sell the jewelry in the house to pay for the mortgage, and jewelry in the house is American paying money taxes on their income. But they're very so clever, they turn it as it's a problem of the Chinese importing goods. No darling, America is due to go bankrupt. And nobody's buying their papers anymore, not even their own banks. Then we create mayhem, we create condition of war. For what reason? Because we don't tell the truth to our people that do you know something? We have to pay the bills you borrowed, you bought the Nintendos, you borrowed the colored television, we didn't have to pay from China. The, this, this mask of Mr. Tariff Man is not him. Mr. Tariff Man is, has to pay the bills, his father made all the money, and they spent it. Now it's due, and he's, there's no other way. So we, the essence has become now wars with nations, creating condition everybody is wrong, but the truth is not told to the nation. Mr. Teichmann has bills to pay in September. American nation doesn't understand. They are due. You haven't spent the money, now it's time to pay. And there is nothing to sell, except getting your nation to pay for it. He doesn't go to the nation to say, guys, you lot lived a good life for a long time, the bills have come to you, we have to pay. How much is it? That much. That way, other nations would have helped. But making enemies overnight, he wakes up, now we are short, a bill is coming tomorrow, it's electric bill. I have to sell the fridge today, the other one, this guy doesn't sell fridges. He taxes people, but blaming the others, you don't look at my pocket because he wasn't part of the promise he made to his nation. We are realistic. And if, what I told you, 
it will come the Americans start killing each other. 28,000 last year, they start killing more and more of each other because I have to feed my child. In Christmas, every Chinese, every American family is short by a thousand dollars for the taxes they put on, but they blame the Chinese. They blame the wall of the Mexican. They did for this. No, darling, America has to pay his debts. If he doesn't tax you, he's selling the house. People uh, have to become educated what's going on. We hear today, Russia and China, the big economies of the world, don't touch the dollar anymore because it's due to bankrupt. As of now, just go on the press, China has refused and Russia has refused to trade between each other in dollars. They deal in their local currency, bartering the way you used to do on the Silk Road. Because America is, is due to be bankrupt, it's there, and Chinese are not buying any more promissory notes in the bank to support them. They went the wrong way. We kept you going, but you want to play the game? No, you pay yourself. Chinese are crying, yes, the tariff, but the total export of China to America is less than one to one and a half percent of the total national uh, GDP. They won't even touch them. They sell their rubbish there and they get paid and they're more in that. But Americans have to pay, what's going to happen? The only way left is wars to stop. That says we cannot go to the war. He's a very wise man. We are not spending any more on defense because we don't have the money to spend. I can't tell the people. The game of war is over. They have sold all the jewelry, they sold all the pots and pans in the house now. Boys, whatever you got in your saving pocket, piggy bank, is to be paid for us to come to But we blame next door neighbor came and robbed. Did we blame the guy down the road we broke in? But we actually had to break the pot because we have to pay. American administration doesn't like me talking. Because they know, we are, we are aware we don't get fooled. We see the soul of them. The only possibility left, let's come to peace with Iran, that we get some, or they get them to order some more Boeings and something else, and we find, and we still blame the Iranian because they're Muslims. It doesn't solve the problem. We have to learn that there is no use making tools of horse. The American debt is on the wars which the British put them under. And now the Americans have to pay, because they were there to be. They start killing each other in mass. 28,000, just look at the map I was watching today. It's just red. West coast, east coast, just a little bit north of Mexico is a bit less. They're killing each other, we don't need to do anything else. And then there is not enough of them to buy, who cares? So, are we training ourselves for a peace? Yes, we are on the right move. The whole humanity is moving toward peace because the war has been paid and nations are hungry, we cannot put them in the war. The 1930s did not solve the problem, 1940s the wars did not solve the problem, late 20s uh, didn't work, the rest of the nations are going 5 and 6 and 10 percent. If you look at the arm buying of the nation is higher than before, yes, because Americans are giving free credit. I buy it. Because by the time I have to pay, there won't be in America to pay. You can have your arms back. The, the new technology in science has made the wars obsolete. It's, as I said, this is like a war of China, it was fantastic, nobody come, could come over to TV, we invented aeroplanes and the helicopters. It's over. And nobody is prepared to invest more in making war machines, because now everybody is directly into it, everybody will have what's the use of doing it. But in the process we are developing beautiful technologies. Our next generation 
if you have children and grandchildren in early teens, they are going to live the life of God. We have provided them, we are providing them, we are developing, they can live two or three hundred, they don't have to go to work. They sit in the room, play a computer game, and we have machinery that it feeds their body, enhances their soul, they feel happy, and if they need, they can have whatever they feel like it. We put it in a GANS machine, and in a dynamic system, we feed them. They don't feel hungry. We are, we are training people to be in the lifetime of traveling the space without getting bored and throwing a stone at each other. The, 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 the life of the man has keyed up just about the right time. And millions of our present generation are walking into computer games, walking into understanding there is another dimension faster, they can do things, and now we just teach them a little bit more. And our grandchildren, who will live a life we could never imagine, the same as our grandfathers come here, they were here hundred years ago, they can't imagine the life we live. They had to go to find a chicken to kill it, now you tell a child about the chicken comes and says from a supermarket. Never seen the chicken farm. I, I don't see problem with the future and our children. They have everything because we are facilitating and their soul is aware of the change. They have to learn to be, if they decide to be in the physical travel, oh, going to another space, you go to Planet Zeus, there is no video game, there is nothing else, I brought something with me, I keep busy, I explore, I don't need to kill. It's a fantastic time with what we see coming up. It's harsh for us, we are the last generation of mankind which suffers so much. And it will change. The future is bright for humanity if the man does not go and do a stupid thing which the other souls don't let it happen. It was, as I started today, uh, people don't understand the news, don't understand what is behind it. You got to understand. Vatican has to plan, the Masons have to plan to get an American president, to get an American army, to take a ship which carries their name, to go to another country to start a war, and it doesn't happen. You remember, I told you about the Frankfurt mission accomplished? With this Mason's shame, it's accomplished to be a warrior. And the press, if you read it, what they publish on the, on the, on the word of the captains of the ship, which went in Mason, is, if you understand what he says, he has, in a way, uh, he has clearly indicated, and we saw it last time when the Russians got them uh, in the Black Sea. American realized they don't have the power anymore to do what they like. They had to go, oh, we, we, we recommend to the Pentagon, uh, we don't want war. The captain of the ship, Masons, this is his word, he says that he was in cold sweat when, as one of the most powerful naval forces, could not get in touch with his base. We knew this when it happened, but we keep licensing. Now it's published, we can tell you. When a captain of the most powerful navy in the world, a powerful, most powerful ship, has a cold sweat, it means I have nothing to protect my people, I'm getting out. And he he actually shipped out the same path as he came to start war. The game is over. We are in for a path of peace. And uh, our next generation have to learn to be home, to be calm, keep busy with computer games, and we give them everything. These ganses you produce with food in it is not just for uh, you and us, it's the progressive development in feeding nations. 
if you want to chew, there is a food that I don't want to go out, but I want to eat. I don't feel hungry because all the food I need is given to me by the system set up. We create a peaceful nation. We create a peaceful nation as one nation. We can free it, elevate the soul of the man very, very easy. It's the most amazing time coming. When our new generation will benefit by it. What are they going to do? We don't want them to do anything, because when they are, they don't do anything, they don't get up to mischief. How many times us in 70s came home and the Papa said, Boy, what time do you call this coming home? You don't get fed up of all this banging and noises and everything else? No, because our generation was a pre-holder to what is come with our children and grandchildren. We started it, because our soul was aware the time has come to move on to the faster damage. And now with all these technologies and everything else, we are preparing for our next generation not to sell anymore, but to create a condition of peace so that they can enjoy it. Thank you very much for today. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank you once again for another Knowledge Seekers workshop here. Um, is there anything else we need to say before we end today's workshop? If you can, please play the same thing as you started with. It brings a lot of messages for those who understand the message. Thank you very much. You're very good. Thank you for a, a complete teaching today, Mr. Kesh. Lots of uh, good information for everybody on all aspects and all dimensions of the uh, plasma teaching. Okay, this has been the 279th Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, June 6, 2019. As always, thank you everybody for attending and participating in today's workshop. And we'll see you all same time and place next week. Hello. We are the Keshe Foundation. Our mission is to bring peace on earth and join humanity with the universal community. We wish and work to bring man as equal to all beings in the universe. By teaching plasma science and technology equally to everyone, no one is left out and no one is abused due to lack of knowledge. By donating to us, you can help achieve this goal. keshfoundation.org forward slash donate One of the things to consider <clears throat> when we speak about going to space is what do we define the space as? And what do we see or what we consider as a space? We take a space in our physical body on this planet and at the same time within the structure of our physical body there is another dimension of life which we call the soul of the man. And even though 
it lives within the space dimensions of the body of the man, has his own life, and has his own line of communication. And what we define space, going to space, we already know the inner sanctum or the creator of our physicality travels the depth of the universe, has been the space travel all the time, has a line of communication with other parts of us, be it through dream we call it, or through subconscious some people they call it, or we have the choice that physically move the physicality with its soul. In a way, we have a bird caged in the physicality of the body of man, and that bird is called the soul of the man. We can open that cage and let it loose at the point of death, when the operation of this cage rots away, it's like, and it cannot hold together, and this beautiful bird becomes free. Still, it takes life in the universal dimension, because it's, it has a life. It exists on its own. Or, we can carry the cage in a box, and take it anywhere. I can take a bird cage in the car, I can take a bird cage in my hand, and walk around the park. It doesn't change the entity and existence of that bird. It's still a bird, it still sings, still communicates with other birds in the park. And this is how our soul is. So, we give option. Those who understand the process of the creation, can take that cage, that bird, out of the cage and free it, because we trusted it come back in. It's very much when you have a parrot at home, you open the door, you let him fly around the house, and he comes back again and he goes in the cage. Because you trust it, he knows that's where it belongs to. And this is the process that we have made an option to man. The soul of the man is that bird, but is encaged in physicality of body of man, and for the first time, man knows, man can see that he, it's him who hasn't trusted the bird to be freed. And it has come the time that he does not need to see the cage to break up, to rust, that the bird can fly out, or by accident open the cage, the cage's door is open and the bird flies out. That accident is when we die on the street, the bird cage opens up. That bird still gets freed. But now, we, we are teaching how the man has control over this door of the cage. And he trusts that the soul will come back to the body. Or the bird will stay, that he can create that atmosphere of the home, the cage. This is the problem we have, and this is what we call it, different ways of traveling. But, to be able to free that bird, without accident, or when the cage cracks, rust, and we call it death, we are teaching how to be able to control, to trust that that bird, when we release it, can come home. Or, can make a home that we can go to. When my children were young, um, four or five years old, they wanted a bird, a cockatoo. I bought them a cockatoo. And this bird, in the cage, was very young, a few weeks old when we got him. And uh, we used to let it free in the house. He knew he goes back in and he sleeps there, and he lays egg there. And it came to the point, because of the diseases carried, 
we had to, the doctors told us, this bird cannot stay in the house, because it's causing problem in the house, health problems. So, we decided that we loved the kid, the bird. We didn't want to let it go, it was part of us. So, we decided, if you let it free, it will die, because he it it didn't know how to look after himself, because he was hand-fed. We decided, we take him to a sanctuary, and we give it to a sanctuary to be kept. We carry the cage, in, across a park, and, as we were walking to go to the sanctuary in the park, to be given to them, an old lady saw us, she says, oh what a beautiful bird, we said they have a problem, we love him, but, if you leave him here, we don't know if you see him, she says, I'll look after it, give it to me, you can come and see it, any time you like. And it was just like a gift, so, we gave, the, we got the old lady in the car, we went to her house, we put the cage there, we showed them how to look after the bird, and the bird was free again in the room, and, every now and then, children said, Papa, can we go and see him? So, we called the lady, we go and see him, and the bird is there. And it was a new home, it was our home. And this is how the soul of the man should be. Is trusting that, where he goes, he can make a home for us. So, in this process, we are teaching different ways of freeing the bird, or carrying the cage, the bird is still there. If you want to carry a cage and go somewhere, you get in the car, that's your spaceship. Still the cage is there, and the bird inside. The cage is the body of the man, and the bird is the soul of the man. Because we haven't trusted that we get the bird back. We take, carry the cage in the spaceship. Or, there is another line of teaching, which is the understanding, the structure of the cage, that you can make the cage not to rot, that then it frees the bird, but it can open up, and you can carry the bird, the bird is free, you don't need to fuel it, you don't need to do anything, it travels the space of the room, the space of the uh, garden, the space of the city, and it comes back home again. In the way when we teach about the soul of the man, is in getting the man to trust himself. And to trust himself, he has to become detached. He has to come detached from physicality, detached from the wealth, detached from everything else, that the wealth is within me, not belonging to me. And this is where, every man makes a mistake. In many of the teachings, I have referred, if you understand, that you can put the soul of the man, to act with the soul of physicality of the man, you can make anything you like. The soul of the man is the sun, and the soul of physicality in the palm of the hand of the man is the earth. You move it in the direction, you create water, you create food, but you don't need to have it, it creates the energy, that the physicality of the man can absorb. We give the earth in the hand, in the palm of the man, he creates what he needs, he takes what he needs from it. Then, if you understand this, you allow the soul of the man, to carry the soul of the physicality of the man with it, and whenever it comes, it makes that hand, that palm, a thousand meter, one meter, in a cage of physicality, or in a cage of non-dimension. So, it's not methods of flight, it's the method of man understanding his own potential, his own grace. So, because we have so many people, who are so physically attached, we teach about the spaceship for years. This is what it was, they still wanted to see, they can get into something. But, as I said, I teach for the universe, not for the man. What we teach, in the dimension of, soul of the man, many 
travels of the universe, which hear the soul of me, are educated, they understand what they missed. But, as this is the last time we bring a messenger on earth, we teach everything for mankind to carry. All the rules are in the book. There shall be no more messengers. It's for man to translate knowledge. Scientifically, and then through the understanding of the soul of the man. What we call theology, ethics. Ethics of using the science in a way that does not harm no one, but it implies and applies the survival of the others. I was talking about this a few days ago, that there is a paper written by me, the station of the scientist as a prophet. The prophets we call Muhammad, Christ or anybody, are for the soul of the man, conduct of the behavior. Scientists like beautiful Tesla and others are to elevate the same but the physicality of them. This time we have put the two together in one goal, then there is no difference. We teach the ethics, the soul conduct and physicality. It's for the man to understand where the two merge and when it's needed to be done. The totality, which counts, not the individuality. What you can serve counts, not what serves you. So, in this way, if you are physical, we have given you the spaceship, all these reactors. If you have moved in the dimension of understanding, part of it, you, you have the dynamic system, you get some energies, you put a glass of water, you mix the energy and something else to get there, you're still the camel bird. You put the orange, take the energy, but you still want that the physicality that you're doing something with it, you drink the water. And for the soul of those who understand the totality, then they don't need the cage, they are the free bird. And this is the essence of all the teaching. It's not different ways of flight, it's understanding the existence of the universe. Then, if you travel with a spaceship, who do you see? The, the citizens of the universe, in a physical dimension. If you travel with the soul, that you can create the physicality, you take that out of the equation. You travel, but you know you have connection with everybody. It's very much, as I said once, it's like you get off out of uh, London and you go to New York. You're there on your own, you still pick your phone and speak to the family in London. It's not finished. Now, the soul of the man, giving the man the same opportunity. We teach for the time to come. And we teach from now, till that time to come. And that time comes, is not anymore the end of the world, something will happen is the maturity of the one's understanding of his own creation.